Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Ultimate Schmodown After Show. My name is John Barr. I am back and happy to be so, hosting this week's episode, talking about a couple great matches. I'm going to start by introducing the gentleman underneath me who also was not able to join me last week, but we're also back and happy to have him here. Uh-oh, stumbling over my words already. That's what a week off will do to you, folks. Colin, how about you, man? How you doing? Well, John, you're never alone when you have the TUSA family. Yeah, didn't see that one coming. It's great to be back. A week of matches that I did not expect much from, but was surprisingly convinced otherwise by the matches themselves. Yeah, you can never underestimate the schmodown. You can't underestimate this show, largely because of the gentleman to my screen right, the MVP, the king of the show. Hasn't missed a single episode yet. Boggs, how are you, my man? Yeah, very good, man. This is the, I think Drunken Prayer said it last week. It's the it's the highlight of the weekend. So I yes, I agree. But, you know, good. Obviously missed all uh, you guys in particular, but me and so holding it down. Uh, and yeah, uh, can't wait to speak to our guests. We've got collision around the corner. A lot to talk about and discuss. So let's get to it. And, and what a lucky audience y'all were last week to be able to get so much soul. Soul, it's always great to have you. How are you feeling today? Are you happy we're back? Because I, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I'm always happy to see both of your faces because they're so beautiful and you guys are so funny. So I love both of you. That's definitely true about one of us. (laughs) Got that right, John. (laughs) I have a funny face. That's all. (laughs) But yeah, Boggs and I uh, were able to do a really good show last week. If you haven't checked it, go check it out. Claudia Dolph was amazing and we love her here. So yeah, definitely go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Absolutely, folks. Make sure you've got all of those tabs bookmarked. Watch every episode of this show. And the best way to support this show and keep making sure there are more episodes in the future, oh, we got a couple different avenues for that. First up, the Patreon, patreon.com slash John Roca. Support the gentleman that helps keep many shows on this channel, including this one. On the air, you can also support us specifically by donating to the Streamlabs link right up there, slash the Ultimate Schmodown Show. Or you can send us in your super chats via the live YouTube comments. But, Sol, you were talking about last week's episode. One of the things that we love to do on this show is read out some of the underneath comments after we're done being live from last week's episode and see what the people had to say. So, Sol, I'm going to hand it on over to you. What did the people have to say about the Sol and Bog show? Well, speaking of Claudia Dolph earlier, she had an answer for us because we asked her, what's your favorite B-level actor? And she didn't have an answer, but she's like, I'll get back to you guys. And here's her answer. Danny Trejo. That's my favorite B-level actor. He's the best. And I have to agree wholeheartedly with that. I get it. Trejo's tacos out here in Los Angeles, they're good. I thought they were just a novelty, but no, they're straight up good tacos. So see, see, Sean, you can go oh. get those instead of Chipotle. <laughs> oh, please, Sean. Oh. Sean's, a, Sean's a Chipotle guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chipotle tacos? He, he loves it. He loves it. The tacos? <laughs> You're going to willingly pay that until yeah. so you can so get a me, bowl? We him all the time, though, so he's eating these chips. Well, know. now I'm pissed so, off. Hold up now. I, I, can, I, can, I can deal angry. with the chips. East Coast, uh, we got Moe's. So you got Moe's? Yes, Moe's. Moe's Mondays, girl. What up? <laughs> and then, uh, but going on for our other comments, we have Jeremy Miller going, fun short show today. Loved Claudia's stories about her parents, and it was nice seeing Mike on screen. Go see Mike. You got some fans. Hey, and then we have, yes. uh, yay. <laughs> and then we have <laughs> Justin going, uh, great show this week. Claudia was a great guest. Nice, humble, and very funny. I hope we have her back on the show again. Great job, everyone. Yeah, she's welcome anytime. We love her here. And we have Drunken Prayer going, really enjoying the one guest shows. It really gives time to get to know the guests. And Claudia was brilliant. Again, some more Claudia love. Like, she's so great. Well deserved, um, yeah. yeah. Well deserved, well deserved. And then we have Chris Taylor, Soul plus Boggs equals Sogs. Great job on this week's show. Also, Claudia, like my question, made my day. I don't really like Sogs. I think we need to go with like your real name and we'll be AOL. No, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. what real name? 
movie in these books. <laughs> what, yeah. what real name? Yeah. <laughs> I love Saw. I got to be honest with you, Saul. I'm a big fan of Sogs. Big fan I of just being like able it. to say that. Big Soggy Sogs. Love, yeah. love oh, me. Dude. A Sog no, You know sandwich. John Barr, one of the OG Sog heads. You know how it goes. <laughs> sure. No, no, no. Uh, I think I think we need to be AOL. <laughs> so what, easy to use. No wonder it's number one. What I think we need is one of our great guests because I know we just got some love for the one guest shows, but today we are blessed to have two different guests representing the three incredible matches that we had this week, and I'm honored to bring on our first guest returning to the show. He is a representative of the stars. He just had a debut match going up in the singles division, and we're so blessed to have him. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Felix Moritz. What is up, everybody? How you How doing? doing? I'm doing, I'm doing well. well. <laughs> yeah, I, listen. I saw the stacks came back. I was like, all right, so someone's having a better day. He didn't cut well, you. Know, uh, I, I think, as we all know, I had a pretty rough match, but I, I keep these at my side. They keep me warm. They keep me safe, and uh, they're never too far from me. That's good. Nice. And you can never really be a loser with that by your side. That's the no. yeah. love Listen. of a good stack of money. Exactly. When I'm sad, I have, as you know, my boy Armando, but I also got Benjamin on the other line. Oh, <laughs> from A to B. Yeah. And how is Armando doing? <laughs> Listen, I mean, he, he obviously is getting a massive pay cut. I, I, I didn't end up firing him. There's been some talks about a performance review. Um, but you know he, he he does a lot more for me than just the schmodown. So he he he's paying his dues elsewhere. Yeah, you can kind of like just shift him down to like assistant regional manager, and then exactly and make it more competitive. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. You got to do what you have to do. Now, I was curious actually, uh, kind of leading into uh, your debut match here at the schmodown. I actually kind of wanted to ask you how yeah. you first got into the schmodown, and then specifically kind of uh, your fan league experience, and then what the biggest. Uh, surprise was going from your fan leagues being able to have that experience getting some matches in and then finally jumping up to the schmodown proper what was that like yeah totally um so i mean i i got into the schmodown i feel like most people did um kind of pre-schmodown just was a fan of christian and mark um I, I was one of those people that you know watched a ton of movie reviews online they were kind of the earlier players in that space like a jeremy johns a chris stuckman you had them and I just kind of followed their career from, you know, AMC Movie Talk to the Collider days and then kind of the expansion of the Schmodown. I, I didn't watch the first season of the Schmodown live. Um, I kind of got into it in, in what was now season two. And then I went back and I watched it all in the trial of JT and everything. And I just instantly became so hooked to it. Um, I, I, I'm an insanely competitive person. My match aside, I get really, uh, I, I am not a fun person to hang out with in a competitive setting. I'm like well aware of that. And to me, it was a really cool avenue to s test your mind, right? Um, I, I, I did a lot of sports growing up. They're all physical, but I, I, I love chess. I love Sudoku. This was like another mental avenue that I could come in and kind of uh, test myself. And so it's funny you brought up the, the fan league thing. Uh, I know Ken brought that up in the intro package and then even in the, the Facebook group, I think, you know, Tim Sim ha had commented um, on it. I, that was my first match. I, I have no fan league experience. That um, explains I, why I wasn't able to find any. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> which yeah, I, 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 is um, a surprise to some, I know, because it's been talked about. But yeah, I mean, that that definitely was uh, my, my first match. I've done a, a ton of, you know, behind the scenes matches with my faction mates, prepping them for matches or them prepping me for this match and all that kind of stuff. But in terms of, you know, lights, camera, action, uh, that that was it. That's one of one. Gotcha. Well, there you go. And, hey, you know, there are worse ways to make a debut. I'll tell you totally. that, man. Uh, yeah. And for that, though, to actually talk about that, I'm going to now toss it on over to Boggs, who has the breakdown of this match. Boggs, take it away. Yeah, let's get to it. Uh, well, first of all, Felix, obviously, a uh, long time no see. You know, we saw you pre-draft. Uh, you know, how's uh, how's life in the current pandemic? How's it fitting into the stars? You know, being a newer player, but you know, a lot of people reference you as um, you know, as the uh, I don't know quarterback, I guess. Um, you know, helping, assisting others, and things like that. So, uh, how's yeah. it been in the in the stars? Yeah, the, the the stars have been great. I think you know one of the things I talked about last time I was on here, and kind of when I was going through that audition process, is. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, kind of like a quarterback. I, I, I'm not necessarily, let's say, like the team leader, especially in terms of Boggs doesn't watch football. It's <laughs> that, was a, that, that was a that, guess. Yeah. That was right. a it's total all... shot in the dark. Like, and, and, and I'm surprised it worked in context. Well, he watches no, football. Football. football is the problem. <laughs> yeah, real yeah, yeah. I, I, I would. I consider myself, you know, probably more of like an offensive coordinator type of thing. Um, we we have a lot of great players, and, and Jeff and Janine and Brandon and, and Nick. I mean. The, the list goes on and on rookies like Jacoby and Christina and all that kind of stuff. But um, a, a lot of what I try and help and bring to the faction is math. Um, I'm, I'm a super, super hardcore nerd. Um, I, I spent from 9 a.m. to you know 2 p.m. today uh, reviewing a, a ton of match tape to help prep strategy. And I, I make a, a lot of like analytical stuff, which I don't want to get too much into for other teams sake. But I, I love the stars because they, they let me do that and they appreciate it. Um, I know that approach isn't for for everybody, um, not only at the faction level, but at the player level, right? There's some people that just like to go in cold. They know what they know. I think Ethan Irwin, whether it's real or not, has talked about very publicly, like that's the approach that he goes and he takes. He, he's He's been in this for so long. What's the point of kind of delving into the single point probability of somebody spinning this? Or if they're not going to go to multiple choice, what's the number of points you need to walk away from to be safe into round three and all that kind of stuff? And so being with the stars has just kind of helped me grow that side of, of the game. And um, it's something that, you know, even beyond me, I think I hope and expect to become a bigger part of the sport. The more matches people play, the bigger the data pool. I know, you know, Frank Janish is a big proponent of the numbers, but there's so much more stuff that I think that's not being done that I, I get to do. And I just love that. Yeah. It sounds awesome, man. You know, especially us, um, you know, nerds of this game, you know, yeah. we love to hear the extra, you know, um, just data that people are, are collating and things like that. So yeah, it's definitely a uh, it's a bonus for us anyway. Um, yeah, you like the Daryl. Yeah, are you trying to be the Daryl Morey of the Shmodown? Uh, you know, some would say, some would yeah. say. Yeah. Um, it, it, it has some refinement to go through. There are two. So I, all the formulas that I do, I, I custom make. Again, super nerd. I watch Excel videos to try and like <laughs> learn as much as I can in terms of crafting and and you know optimizing. There are two formulas that are like not quite there but if i can get them it will be perfect like it, it almost like how you have um like the the best like bpi or spi like the the power indexes that in uh, espn and all that kind of stuff do for question difficulty relative to a single player at like every single question type i'm so close to cracking it and if it if i can get it i think it will make a huge difference and it, it, you know, it kind of sucks because I think relative to where the stars are now, it doesn't show that it's helping. Um, and I'm very aware that like on paper, it doesn't, but I can guarantee that behind the scenes in terms of the approach that we take the setting and all that kind of stuff, a lot of it is driven by numbers. You're, you're speaking okay. to my heart right here because I do spreadsheets and Excel, both work and then also like in other aspects too. So I'm just over here like, yes, spreadsheets and formulas, <laughs> keep talking, keep talking. Exactly. No, I, I love it. It's my jam. Yeah. And also, I uh, use it for you know, my before... budget and it tells me I have very little left. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, I can help you with that. What's up? I, yeah, please. <laughs> He's taking How much am I supposed things. to send on candles? I don't remember. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so before we get into your match as well, obviously you've got a certain character. Let's say, you know, he's Flash. Money, obviously, is the, is yeah. the alias. Um, so how was that caught in your first promo? Because you did cut a good one for your draft. I remember that caught a lot of attention. So yeah. how does that look like fun? It's, it, yeah, it's been good. I think um, that, that that's another aspect of the showdown that I really like. And I think Christian has also talked about that. Not so much this incoming rookie class, because I think, you know, the Rager, Brother Lomas, there, there are a lot of good characters, even, you know, Griffey Nooms as he mm. goes by, not so much like a, a big over the top character, but I think there's like a lot of small stuff that he does in there. Jacoby's last promo cracked me up with the fake swear words that he couldn't say. Mm. Um, but I, I do think that there was a, a class kind of between this incoming one and the OGs where people just weren't that into characters. Um, it was more of a, oh, like this is cool. I love trivia. I'm just going to go in and dominate. And, you know, Bibiani has definitely worked on his character, but I don't think Bibbs is like a huge character guy. Going back to Ethan Irwin or Drew McQueenie, a Sam Levine, there's just that side that like, that really interested me. And I, I was trying to think, you know, what what could what could be cool, what would work? Um, when I first started watching the Schmodown, I don't think it's a surprise looking at my character. It's a huge fan of Action Army. Um, the, that, that's kind of the idea behind the the suit and the glasses then i tried to you know back in from there 
for for me, I think every kind of good character is grounded in a little bit of truth, and I am nowhere rich enough to have the, those stacks of money. But I think men mentally, right, that's that's where I want to be. I, I, I work for Amazon. My, my up until like a month ago, you know, Jeffy B was the both the richest man in the world and my boss's 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 boss. It's one of those things that like I, I envision that one day, and so it's just like, okay, what's a cool way to do it? But I think you know the the characters changed a little bit since that intro promo. Um, that was very very much leaning into heel. Um, I, I was calling out people obviously way above my weight, like a Bateman or a guy before he retired. Um, I can't remember who else in there. And I, I I've tried to pull it back and make it a little bit more funny, in part because I think you know as the stars we're not here to to be heels. We leave that to people like Corruption so that they can be hated. We're here to be you know an awesome team, and, and we're all different. Um, I think the the odd couple slogan of odd forever is like almost the stars slogan. Like we are all these like individual pieces that come and work together. And um, I, I think being with them for that character has worked really well. Interesting. Very interesting. So going into that first round though. Yeah. So it did finish nine, four, obviously Jen did get a perfect round there. You did have a, uh, a few misses, you know, it is your, your first match. So, you know, that is um, part of the game. Yeah. Uh, Overall thoughts on the first round? Uh, first of all, you know, any questions in particular? What was your feeling into it? You know, missing the very first question as well. Did was did that kind of yeah uh, yeah rally you a bit? That, yeah, that that wasn't fun. Uh, missing the first question. The overall mm. experience in round one was fun. Um, I, I not, not as an excuse. Like they, a lot of them just weren't my questions. There there mm. are two questions in that match, and we can get into them. That like that I knew. And I, I second guess myself one really hard in round two. And then that creature from the Black Lagoon one. Mm. Um, I didn't even show my answer on that one. I wrote, I wrote Swamp Thing. I knew it. I then changed it right before I started writing. That's one that I regret. But, you know, the, there's only so much you can do when you don't know the answer flat out. And for the, I think the first question was a Tangled answer. And I put Moana. Mm. Never, I've never seen Tangled. Um, my, I have a, a little brother who's, you know, he's 16 years younger than me. But... I was in college when he was born. And so it's not, we were seeing movies together. I, I was out watching, uh, you know, w whatever was hot in the 2010s and, and he was back in California. So there was that, you know, that like little gap of, of Disney movies, which I for sure need to catch up on. But uh, yeah, uh, other than that, the, the, the Swamp Thing, uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, I, I knew Jen was going to be difficult. Uh, you know, she had just played my my faction mate in Jacoby and gotten a perfect round there. It, it's something that I was going and expecting. Um, round two is kind of where I was planning to push and pending the category, you know, really roll the dice on not having any multiple choice to try and catch up on that. But that ultimately didn't work out. And I know we'll get to round two. But otherwise, you know, it, it is what it is. I, I was happy with the, the JTE to pull that Mortal Kombat. I should have had it without it, but it's still just like, slow it down you know you know it bring it back yeah so i, I actually thought it was kind of a hard first round um just r round in general um but obviously you know that's jen did go perfect there as well which yeah. i'll i'll give overall thoughts on the match i'll save my thoughts at the end but john any overall thoughts on the first round obviously finished nine four jen did go perfect and got the bonus as well and any questions for felix as well yeah i mean kind of going into it i was definitely curious having seen jen play before especially as the promo package kind of covered her great performance in the free-for-all i was like it was kind of weird that i was like i guess we haven't really seen jen in singles like i was trying to think yeah. about it. i was like obviously we saw her in her geekdom we saw her in teams, but this was like her first time in singles. And we heard from her when she was first in that inner geekdom tournament. She was like, yeah, I'm not super an inner geekdom player. I'm just hopping in as needed. So I was de definitely kind of like going in very curious and like expectations completely blown out of the water. Like I was so impressed. I think it's one of those things where some people like to say, oh, you know, we're seeing more and more perfect round one. So that makes them less special. But I, I would have to disagree based on this because it's always fun to see that like one person that yeah. you haven't necessarily seen all of that from and then just come in and absolutely crush it. Like I was just so uh, blown out of the water. And again, like you were saying, tough first round. I mean, I don't know if you felt this way, Felix, but like when I heard the uh, the one question about a uh, Chris Farley, I was like, oh, that's not black sheep. I guess I'll write black sheep. But like no one thinks about that. Like they don't think about what his character's job was before the totally. politics part. <laughs> they were just like, yeah, he's, I don't know. He's in that. And I was trying to think of any other David Spade, Chris Farley movie. And I was kind of coming up, I, I was coming up blank. I'll be honest. That's why I don't critique anyone 
on any like questions they missed. Cause I'm like, I'm stupid. You got, you got me impressed by getting one, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a huge part of that where I'll watch a, a Schmodown match and they'll get to a five and I'm like, that that's a five and I'll, I'll ask somebody else about it. And they're like, I, in no world could I ever know that. And it, there is like this relative difficulty of what's your film base. But yeah, I, I, I'm comforted by the fact that I think she got the perfect round. I would have loved to have kept it closer, but knowing that like I could have come out as like a really solid rookie and gotten seven, eight. Right. And I still would have been behind. <laughs> um, it, it, it just gives me more motivation to catch up. And, you know, I, I won't out anybody, but I've had a couple people in the Schmodown community reach out to me and be like, you know, like legit, that was a very hard first round. And again, some people will say differently because it's their question set. It just, it just wasn't for me, but yeah, kudos to Jen. Um, she is awesome, both on camera and behind the scenes. She's a, she's a super cool person. Absolutely. And I think we also have to give our kudos to uh, Harry Potter, not the person who created it, Boggs, but certainly the folks who watch those movies, who starred in those movies and like them because they, they, they cast a spell on this round too, huh? Well, uh, you know, Felix did spin initially uh, Wizarding World and he spun off in London on the 90s. Uh, you know, you got your first question correct, uh, the two-point Independence Day. Second question, multiple choice, Anthony Hopkins. I, I thought, glad you got that because, you know, you're you're half English, correct? Yeah. So, uh, Anthony Hopkins, I thought, thanks. Thankfully got that. <laughs> Obviously missed the uh, multiple choice, Michael J. Fox, Doc Hollywood one, and the um, Heath Ledger and Julie Stiles. Yeah, yeah, 10 Things I Hate About You. Um, so, Jen went. Obviously, she's landed on uh wizarding world as you said she's you know clearly put it on uh she's gone um well she's gone perfect last one going multiple choice and winning by uh 18-7 by ko um i want to ask soul first uh, overall thoughts on the second round please uh and any questions for felix um because yeah it was um unfortunately okay <laughs> Yeah, when I was uh, watching it, you could see kind of, and I'm going to ask you here, Felix, because it looked like you knew all of those Harry Potter answers. So uh, the first question is, did you know all of them? And the second one was just like, what was the strategy of like picking? Because I know you were saying you're playing more a defense there than offense. And uh, when your post-match interview saying like, oh, I knew she put it on the wheel. And I know hindsight's twenty twenty. Is that going to, going forward, with strategy, are you going to change that up? Try to be like, no, if I know this really well, I'm going to go for it, even if you think the other person put it on the wheel. Yeah, I, I mean, you hit it right on the head, 100%. So I, I would have gone perfect with her Harry Potter, which hurts even more because I obviously spun away from it on my first one. Um, with, without, you know, tipping my hand as a credit to, to my manager, there's a lot of people that know that I, IG in general, while I'm, I'm probably not at the level of entering into IG and winning those matches, IG level within the Schmodown is like the it's or standard singles in, in teams. That should be no problem for, for me, if I'm honest. Um, I, like, those are the films that really resonate with me more than just like broad general cinema, although I love cinema overall. Um, but like whenever we do our study sessions, those are the ones that like I get really jazzed about. Now, even though it's not my league, I'll always play and, and try and push my teammates. But yeah, I I, I knew them. Um, like you said, it was my first match. I was trying to just stop the bleeding, trying to keep it really within the realm of if I hit my five, can I get us a sudden death or can I get us to a point where she misses her five? Because that's always going to be the flip of a coin. Um, it, it, it definitely sucked with that decision. And I think that's something that I'll take moving forward. It's like, you know what, if you, if you feel confident, don't worry about the steals, play your multiple choice and you, you can stop the bleeding that way rather than playing defensive and trying to do it. Um, but yeah, I, you know, nineties, which is the, the one that I ultimately ended up getting. Th those are again, such a, a hard thing to study for, right? Because it, it's anything you have 10 years of cinema that you're trying to, to bake in. Um, and I, I think, you know, as a general Schmodown player, you try and specialize in as many slices as you can so that you're, you know, you're well-rounded, you're well-versed, but there's no real way to prep for a decade other than being great at every slice. And that, I said at the top, the, the, the 10 things I hate about you question, it, it's one of those things, if we were allowed to have our whiteboards in round two, because uh, it, it's something I need to get out of my study routine, it's like, when I'm watching matches as a fan on the side, I, 
I write it down because I'm not there. I'm not blurting it out. And I, I hit pause if I see someone's about to, to jump it out. If I could write it down, stare at it and be like, all right, I got it. I wouldn't have changed it because that was my guess before multiple choice. Um, and, and, and I should have just swung for the fences. And then as soon as we went to multiple choice, I was like, has doubting myself. Is it too easy of a question? I know they've asked, I think, two or three 10 things I hate about you questions over the past couple of years, which typically can be a sign that, you know, they have a question bank for it. But also it's like, well, have they used them all? And it, it, too many wheels spinning at that point. But yeah, uh, unfortunate. Um, I said it in my post-match. There's a lot of people that have gone on to come back from uh, an 0-1 start. Um, just again, a bit of a numbers thing for everybody. Uh, Brennan Myers, he got seven points in his first match ever, same, same as me. But he had the opportunity for a steal and missed it. So more PPE possible than me. And, and look where he's gone. So again, great motivation for me as a player to know that there's been a lot of great players who have lost, but also great players who have lost with that tally exactly, and then just gone on to to dominate. Yeah, so I want to hear, I've got a thought on, on this, so uh, I guess it's a bit of a hot take. I want to hear Colin's thoughts on it as well. So obviously you matched up against Jan, you know, everyone's anticipating Jan as uh, doing, you know, doing bits this year, doing, you know, getting some big wins, etc. I felt like because Jan is experienced in the final leagues, She's playing in singles. She's playing in IG. She's playing the free for all. She's playing in teams. You've never had a fan league match, and I didn't feel like it was the the best matchup for you. Just going in, and I just felt oh that she's seeming on paper that she's own one in singles, but you know in reality she's so much more experienced than you. And I just felt as a rookie, I was on the total. I don't know. I just didn't think it was the fairest matchup for you, to be honest. Yeah, um, I, going in. The, I think there's you know there's pros and cons to that definitely. Uh, I, I don't know offhand. But I, I, I'm definitely one of the few rookies that didn't debut against another rookie, mm. uh, and that has its own benefits. But it's one of those things where it's like, and this is in zero way offense to Jen. She's a fantastic player, but if she's she's not Goliath. But if you beat somebody who is who's great, and again, she just came off a perfect round. She has a ton of match experience in different leagues. If if I were to go out and beat her. That does a lot for me. Um, it, it helps kind of fast track into the matches that I ultimately want to be playing down the road. With a loss, it, it hurts. But I think, like you said, there's an expectation that she was definitely the favorite for that match. It, it doesn't sting as much. Obviously, the, the the way I played does. But the overall outcome at the end of the day, I think, doesn't do as much to tarnish you know who I, I am as a player. And I hope my character kind of papered over the cracks of, of that one match of trivia and all that kind of stuff. But... Yeah, for sure. It, it was definitely more of a daunting task to go up against, you know, her than let's say somebody like, um, uh, again, no offense to another rookie, but like a John Flickinger who's super knowledgeable in movies. And like, I've watched his stuff on YouTube forever. I know he's great, but he's never been in this world before either. Yeah, yeah, I, I tell you, yeah, I'm glad you've got that mindset because now, you know, of course, when you lose by KO in your first match, people are throwing around FCL. You know, he <laughs> yeah. shouldn't have got drafted. So I can imagine it's um yeah, it's a bit of a rough one. But Colin, overall thoughts on the match and uh any questions for, for Felix as well. Yeah, to pick up exactly on what you were saying, Felix, I think no matter which way this match goes, it would have worked out for you. It was a plus either way. You're playing yeah. somebody that, like you said, they could have matched you up against a rookie, and then no offense like to to the names to not be mentioned, and to me at least I said the same thing. That was a tough round one. And it just seemed like Jen's experience might have raised the level of questions for this match. So therefore, you got a little, you might have fought above your weight, to use another term. For sure, and yeah. uh, that's a good thing sometimes. And then either way, if you flip it and win, there would have been people out there that'd be like, oh, Jen's only had one match. Yeah, she, there would have been some way to, you know, it would have found some way to, yeah. to tear it down on either side. So the like, just positives all around. And knowing exactly, you started off this conversation knowing exactly what you did wrong, knowing exactly how to fix it, knowing exactly how to conquer the problems, and the numerical approach, the statistical approach that you're taking to this is seeming to pay off in the sense of you are more equipped to recover faster because you can analyze exactly what you need to do to fix it for next time. And I think that's something that like a lot of people need to take notice of and really need to start thinking about because i mean hey like i'm a golden state warriors fan we know all about the statistics and figuring yeah. out like how are we going to do this how are we going to do that with this amount of this and this amount of that like that's where sports are going and you slowly yeah. start to see everybody is copying molds like that 
And it wouldn't shock me if, you know, we see in three years, it's like, oh, man, yeah, we got a numbers guy. He's not even on the team. We, he's, he's, it's a patron level thing. They just got a patron guy that comes in here and does the stats, and he's super smart. I can't wait, dude. You are a star. See what I did? I, I like it. I like it. What um, was the, uh, uh, as well, just on the back of that, uh, Felix, so, you know, I will ask the question, what has it been like seeing sometimes the criticism of the performance, you know, the, some, you know, the online reaction, you know, people yeah. saying you should go to the FCL. Uh, how have you handled that? Because obviously, you know, you're quite in depth with your, the thought process. I'd love to hear how you find it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I knew that there was obviously going to be those comments, even the, from the second that I turned my camera off, it's to be expected. Um, it's one of those things where it's like, you can never fully prep for it unless you've been through that. And um, obviously there's, there's a level of like your humanness that wants to come out and be like, Whoa, chill. Like I, behind the scenes, no one will ever know how many hours you put into something to like get there. And again, it, it, it wasn't my questions, but it, it, it doesn't bother me. You know, the, the fans can say whatever they want about throwing me into the FCL. I'm not going to be there. Um, not because, you know, I'm above that, but like I'm confident in my abilities. I have a really good relationship with my faction and my manager. And I know that I, I can perform above that level. Um, so, you know, it, it, it doesn't do anything to sway or d deter me. Um, I'm not saying it does anything to motivate me. I'm, I'm just as focused as I was if, they, if I had won that match, right? It, it, it's all about, um, like Colin was saying, when you, when you do numbers and, and you're just analyzing it that way, you can take the emotion out of things pretty easily. And I, I know what I did wrong. And it helps me say like, okay, yeah, people can critique whatever they want. Uh, look at, look at Yana as a, going back to sports, right? Giannis in the playoffs before uh, <clears throat> the, the finals. Th there's a reason that fans were chanting, or, uh, uh, counting at his free throws because he had that penalty, right? Did that do anything to affect him? No, I think he went 15 of 17 or 17 and 19 17 in the final. 17 of 18, it was ridiculous. I, I think it yeah, helped it, him. It, it exactly, definitely right? helped him. It, 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 and so, like, he... It, it was almost worse that the fans addressed what the problem was because all it did was like, yeah. all right, I'll just spend a week and I'll do that. And then guess what? The, there's a bandaid over the crack or you like, you're sealing that permanently, whatever. And so, yeah, it sucks to see that. I would have loved to have had like a lot of praise. The, the, I think the worst thing out of all this obviously is the, the loss of points to the stars in general. Um, my own performance, all that kind of stuff aside, like there is a team aspect and, we all want to pull for the team. And I, I think, you know, the first thing I did was send to my group, like, Hey guys, here's how it went. I'm sorry. I let everybody down because everyone's trying so hard. It's not like anybody is just sitting on their, their butt being lazy. Like I said, from, from 9am to 2am doing Shmodan stuff uh, today. So like, it's a grind. A lot of people behind the scenes who are the keyboard warriors don't see it. And, and, and that's fine. Yeah. It's a tough one, but you know, to get a perfect game as well. So even if you did play well, it's, it's you know, it's hard to beat a perfect game. So 100%. Uh, crazy, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we've got some Discord questions for you now, I believe. So, uh, so if you want to um, read uh, Felix some uh, Discord questions, please. Let's do it. Definitely. All right. So the first question for you comes from Jeremy Miller saying, what movie have you seen the most times in a theater? Oh, in the theaters? Um while I, I'm going to try and think of it in the back of my brain, but a really cool like in theater stat about me is uh, my dad, the very first movie he saw in theaters was the first Star Wars. Uh, he saw that back to back. The only, not the only time, the first time he ever done that. The first movie I ever saw back to back in theaters was uh, Star Wars that came out when I was a kid, the prequels. Um, so that's a really cool thing. I was hoping I'd be at a point where I had a kid for the, the next trilogy. <laughs> so to do the same thing, but I'm way too young for that. Um, Benjamin Button, 12 Years a Slave, I both saw three times in the theaters. Um, and uh, those are rookie one. numbers. We got to pump those up. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, th that was really more to take somebody there. I mean, uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, uh, Back to the Future. The, I've probably seen each of, each of those movies in the 30s, not in the theaters, obviously, but there are movies that I watch religiously at home, Jurassic Park, probably in the mid 20s, all that kind of stuff. Any sort of like, I mean, uh, eight, like big modern classic 80s movies that like my dad or my mom showed me, I would have seen those like 30, 40, 50 times at some point. Um, but it, not that many in the theaters back to back. I saw Before episode I... 211 times in theaters. 
You saw wait, what? <laughs> F2 11? I saw episode 2 11 oh, episode. times in theater. <laughs> I thought you said F2. I'm like, nobody's seen Fast and the Furious 11 <laughs> yeah, times yeah, in general. Yeah. No, I've seen Tokyo <laughs> Drift. I've definitely watched Tokyo Drift over 11 times. That definitely. <laughs> a- absolutely. Absolutely. I've seen Tokyo Drift over 11 times. Love it. Confidently yeah. can say that. I was going to say before we go to the next question, I, I like the uh, that you said mum instead of mom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there, I noticed I, that. Okay. I don't even realize it. the next question from drunken prayer love the suit in your intro apart from yourself who's the best dressed player in the schmodown oh that's a good question because there's two schools of thought here obviously listen uh, a lot of people would just say bateman it, uh, respect everything he does in his attire got for me gotta wear a tie otherwise you're undercutting yourself not the catalina wine mixer you're in the schmodown <laughs> uh, I'll probably go on like a completely separate route and say Makuga. I know he's not he's not active anymore, um, but I, I respect the getup because it, it's almost like he sees the vision and he puts all the elements together. Now they're super loud and they're out there, but they fit the character of the wild man slash mild man so well. That was before he was sponsored by the suit company. Yeah. Now he's legitimately sponsored by the suit company and just has a closet full of them. It's yeah. Like- God, imagine that. Oh, man. Yeah, me neither. How about that? Yeah, he's got a whole thing with like golf pants and stuff too. He goes out with like crazy golf pants on. He's like, yeah, I just thought that, that was his taste. I will say <laughs> a quick honorable mention to like early season bibs when he used to do like the massive the intros. Yeah. Yeah, and all that kind of stuff. And video drew. I think like fitting the character, it might not be like best dressed in terms of style, but best dressed in terms of character. Those two. Great. Adam Humphreys, honorable yeah. mention. Yes, great. Great choice. Warfather as well. Yep. Yes, Warfather, yeah. And then we have uh, Gift ta- Yeah, we have Gift Taylor here going, biggest lesson you learned from your first Schmodown match? Yeah, so I think you, you brought it up in your question, right? It's uh, It doesn't matter how strong you think somebody is in, in, their, in that respective category. Let's say she's a 10 at Harry Potter, right? And I'm a, 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 an 8. It doesn't mean I should back away from that to try and get something with a little bit more distance on my side. It, it's just about playing my game, taking the slices that I know that I can do. Um, if you, you, I'm sure everyone saw me bite my tongue or mumble like the, the answers under my breath for that Harry Potter one. Like I, I knew it, uh, it would have been a different match with that. And so I think it's it's just sticking to the things that I know and not being so worried about who's on the other side. It's like, a, it's, like it's not so much like, uh, or it's more like tennis, right? Like you, you are playing the person across from you, but you still have to be able to hit inside the box on your serve. Like that's more important than trying to to place it perfectly. I, I think really always great... like United fans. This is so weird. You guys are so <laughs> close. Sometimes. Oh, it sucks. I was like, that's a great lesson to learn, and I think more people need to have that mindset going into the showdown because there could be a lot of good round twos if people are like, I'm just gonna go with what I'm good at, regardless of if I think the other person's good at it. Didn't yeah. Kate just do that recently with uh, Paul and um, and Ben? She was like, what are you guys talking about? You guys will crush this. Shut up and take yeah. it. <laughs> like, right. yeah, you just need more of that confidence. Like, no, you guys are going to get these right. Just do it. 100%. Right. And then we have uh, Malcolm here going, what has most surprised you about the Schmodown since becoming a part of it? That's a good question. Um I've talked about it in passing here. I, I don't think I had ever, uh, and I had never underestimated the amount of work that goes into it. Um, to me, it was almost like a different style of work. It, it's so much more broad thinking um, than my, I think, initial approach for me. Again, it's super competitive, and I, I tend to get hyper focused on things. Um, it also causes me to ramble, which I'm sure everyone here in the audience has noticed that I just go on these like massive uh, tirades, but. I, I was getting so into the details of specific films that if I was studying this thing, I would have to know any sort of round five question. And from a time management perspective, that's not effective. Um, knowing front to back the wiki of a film rather than freeze framing, putting on the um, closed captions and all that kind of stuff does you way more. Unless you're in like a specialty league, I think, you know, for IG, for Star Wars, that definitely is where you need to be. You have to have every five down pat. But when you're just doing singles and teams, like broad knowledge means so much more than having like everything down to a, a T, especially when you're coming in, right? If you're 
a vet like a like a, a Merle or a Roca and that kind of stuff, and and you probably have seventy five percent, eighty percent of all film base done, then yeah, yeah, start to like really delve in. But for the incoming class, maybe year two, year three, wikis and knowing broad knowledge is so much more important than at least I thought initially. I'm making mental notes here for Box and Ice next match. That was fantastic. <laughs> was we definitely did not just study keyboard. like that, like ever and for our last match. That sounds better. Let's just run Wikipedia's box. That sounds yeah, I, just as a quick aside, <laughs> there is a, a film that I was studying and prep for the, the gen match. Uh, or not, not the gen match, a, a mock match uh, earlier in the year. Um, and I, I wrote 123 questions for one film. And it was, it, I, I presented like my, I have a huge doc as the whole team does of like questions. And they're like, Dude, focus on like 2025 20, and move on because it's not effective. And so like that was a, a huge kind of shift for me mentally. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes when you're watching that movie, you're like, oh, I'm focusing, I'm focusing. So yeah, definitely going yeah. broader, especially for singles and teens. And yeah. we have the last question here, Justin T. What's your favorite film genre? Oh, film genre. It's probably fantasy sci-fi for for two reasons. One, I you know I touched on it that like the IG films in general, which most of them you could probably pocket into fantasy sci-fi, are are what I love. Um, but just a just as like a broad concept, um, movies about time. Like I know that's not a genre. But movies about time often fall into like that that pocket. Um, but we do have dystopian I'm, and time travel in IG. Yeah, that's, so that's true. It, that, good point. In our world, it counts. In our world, it counts. Um, I, I get so obsessed with the idea of time. And a really great book, if anybody is looking for a recommendation, Slaughterhouse-Five, describes the way that like Nolan's Interstellar does about time, of like a, a peak and a valley that you can walk through and enter and all that kind of stuff. Any sort of stuff like that, I, I, I get really jazzed about. There's there's movies that like Bucky Barnes, uh, it, like all these things that they haven't asked about in the show. If there's a side time match, then like I am there. So like subgenre, anything about time, broad scope, fantasy, sci-fi. Clockstoppers fan. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's that. that see, these are the kind of questions that the Schmodan is 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 missing. <laughs> Best Nickelodeon movie ever made. Oh yeah, I, I, so um, you could get the watch as a part of a Happy Meal as a kid, and I would go to McDonald's. Oh, oh I never got it, and I, oh, I never got sad it. Sad day. Yeah, I the wrong so a Minute Men. That was a what Disney movie? Channel movie. Yeah, yeah that was uh, one of the like when I was aging out of Disney Channel movies when that came out because then yeah, there was a too. kid in that that's now like seven feet it. tall. Whew. Yeah, for sure. The, yeah, that's why I haven't heard of that movie either. It's great. Perfect time for John. <laughs> wow, that was so the perfect. Time, yeah, time has frozen. Yeah. Tut. See, I, I was gonna, I was gonna throw to John saying, I think we have some patrons to come in, but uh, I'm gonna throw it to Bugs. I think we have some patrons to ask questions. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, before we get uh, the first one in, I do want to know who's gonna win the Premier League this year. Oh, it's him. okay. So my my buddy and I do a bet every year. We do the table. Uh, mm. right before match day one, it's locked. We can't touch it. We do 50 bucks. Um, mm. Right now, if, if squads are unchanged right now, Liverpool, because getting Van Dyke back, I think is huge for them. Mm. The, the amount of points that they lost because of him and Henderson gone down pat, that's easy 15 points they're going to get. If the transfer market plays out like I think everyone thinks, it kills me, but... but Man it. City, because there's no reason that Man City don't have the resources to buy Harry Kane and, and Grillo, and that's an insane team. So, yeah. True. United's looking good, though, as well. You know, yeah, yeah, listen, if we, get, if we get Kamavinga, I, it doesn't seem like Pogba's going to sign an extension, but as long as he doesn't leave and we get Varane, I, I'll lock for a second, but we could push for the title. I love Varane. He's yeah. so, so sturdy, so solid. I the, want our, Harry Kane so bad. I, our I'm, back line would be so young besides Mags, who I think is 28, because we'd have Luke Shaw, 25, Juan Basaka, who I think is 23 or 24, then Varane, and I still prefer De Gea, but Henderson as the keeper, who's 25 as well. Mm -hmm. Like that That's a back line that we have for the next six years, which is a, a great like a great thing to build on. Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, I like watching, but I didn't have a team. And the, apparently, I told my dad, pick a team for me. So apparently, my team is Leeds. So I'll just oi. be in the middle <laughs> of the league. Just like, just not the best, not the worst. 
But I mean, <laughs> listen, I, I don't know how into it you are. To, to come up from the Champo and do what you guys mm -hmm. did in your first season, if you have time, research your guys' training tactics called Murder Ball. It is one oh. of the craziest things that a team does in their training session. Yeah, they're definitely. Yeah, they, they are definitely the interesting to watch. Uh, yeah. So I was just like, oh, that's a good team to pick because they definitely them and Wolves. Wolves plays a very interesting game of soccer. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 they're, they're so fast. <laughs> good teams, good teams all around. But let's get in some patrons. So we're gonna bring a couple of patrons in. They wanna ask you some questions. So all right. first one is Drunken Prep. Come on down, sir. Hey. How you doing? Hey, Joyce, nice to meet you. You too, man. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I usually try to be nice to guests to start, but you Wait and Colin are both, object are both objectively wrong. The best Nickelodeon uh, movie is Good Burger. Oh, okay. Good Burger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good Burger. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Stand corrected. Yeah. Okay, that, that's the reason that I get uh, shakes at, at In-N-Out, is because of Good Burger. I got so obsessed with the strawberry shake from there. I just It's a part of my life now. Imagine a Mondo Burger at City Walk. <laughs> I'm, I'm British. I have no idea what you're talking about now. This is just going. You don't know Mondo Burger? No. The it's, burger it's, from it's, Good it's, Burger. It's, it's, it's yeah, the evil burger. burger. Oh, yeah. from Good yeah, yeah. Burger. And City Walk is just Universal Studios. Yeah, oh, that part okay. of it. Yeah. Sorry. Colin and Felix <laughs> just pulled an Uno reversal on your name drop of Good Burger. That was the best movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap on. No, what's your question, dude? What's up? Uh, I didn't actually have one feeling just like coming on and joining, but um, no, I do have a question. Do you have an actor that like you'll go and see whatever movie they're in, regardless, even if you know it's going to be terrible, you'll just oh, go just for uh, that person? I, yeah, I mean, I have an answer. I probably have two answers, but I haven't seen their entire filmography. Um, I, I think people often talk about like The Rock is one of the few people that can still print money movie in, movie out. That's not my answer. But I think two people that paved the way for that type of star, Will Smith and Tom Cruise, I think still for me are, are legends. Again, I, I love action movies that round aside and all that kind of stuff. But like, I grew up on Will Smith. Like, I, I was a kid when a lot of his big hits came out. But I mean, obviously, the, any of the Men in Black films, uh, Wild Wild West, anything that he made a soundtrack <laughs> to, I'm obviously going to go back and watch. <laughs> uh, and then Tom Cruise, I think the evolution of his career him as uh, an executive producer, allowing himself to get to do the stunts that he wants, just helps cinema as a whole. And I think that that's so commendable and wanting to go and support that kind of stuff just for the craft is awesome. Again, it, it was one of those things, if you have time, um, the uh, halo jump, high altitude, low open uh, yeah. thing that he did. If you haven't seen the behind the scenes about how he was able to assess how far he was, like he was almost directing himself while he was legitimately doing one of the most insane free not free jumps but like para jumps in the world is it's awesome so both for like nostalgia and for craft it's probably those two yeah very deal and respect for me he jumped off a roof for the latest mission impossible kept running with a broken ankle yep so yeah you like about the guy but he has commitment it's a, yeah, yours it's uh, nicholas cage oh, oh <laughs> come on Ooh, i'm so excited for peg oh, i, started I, I, I hear it's I, so good uh, i hear it's so good I got 30 minutes into it and then forgot the show was starting. Like, <laughs> wow. Save it. Save it. That is commitment, sir, and we appreciate it. Wow. Oh. What's your favorite Cage movie? Oh, God damn. I'm going to have to go with Colin Air. No, I'm going to have to go with Colin Air. It has to be. Put the bunny in the basket, man. So <laughs> even, even with the horrible accent, I mean, I'm not American, so I don't know if it's a like bad accent or a good accent. It just sounds bad to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it's it's bad. It's bad. Oh, yeah. okay, good. I'm not wrong then. Yeah, I don't know what you guys were talking about. It was a 100% perfect, accurate <laughs> New York accent. Yeah. I don't understand what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jungle Pro. Yeah, Thanks very much. Lovely to see you Cheers, guys. Man. Nice to you later. Uh, next one, I believe, is Maria. Come on down. Hi. Hello, hello. Hey. Hi. Nice to meet you. I didn't know who you, you were at first. I'm very sorry. I do watch. It's all good. All matches, I'm new to I'm this space. <laughs> Somehow, I'm sorry. Uh, I wonder how you take the criticism. Like, you know, somebody like Boggs says, you know, you that people are talking about you going to the FCL. How did, what, does that bother you when people say things like that to you? Or is, are you good with that? I wouldn't be good with yeah. that. That's why I'm asking. I'm just wondering. Yeah, I, I, I didn't say this in my initial response, so I'll expand it on a little bit. Part of it, I think, is predicated on the idea that so that. many people were saying that I had these numerous matches in the fan leagues. 
Uh, and so like what, there's an expectation, I think, of performance, even as a baseline, Colin was talking about it, that like Jen has played a ton of matches, even if this is not a, her you know, X number match in singles, there is a baseline there that she can, she can lean on. Mm -hmm. For me, this, this was round zero. Um, I'm not saying that those comments necessarily would be in there. If, okay, if so. that. For, for me, it's like, hey, I, again, I, I know what I can do. I, I've watched, I don't know how many Schmodown matches there are to date. I know roughly exactly. what I get each, each time. So I'm confident in my ability. So, you know, you oh, take good. it with a grain of salt. Good, I got it. Okay, I just didn't know how everybody takes that. I just I knew it would crush me, but I'm mean, your guy. Maybe that's okay because you guys do that stuff. So I don't know. I just wanted to ask. Yeah. Also, so, what was your favorite movie of last year? Oh, uh, 2020. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, bad year. Yeah, I'm gonna cheat really quick. I I, I think everyone knows this about me because I've, I've publicized it. I, I log every movie I've ever seen, so I'm just gonna quickly check. Oh, you're a letterbox what... user as well. That's good. Uh, not Letterbox because I, I have to support my Amazon overlords, and so it's on IMDb. But you already oh, sent Jeffrey to okay. space. Yeah. <laughs> you've supported him enough, and he didn't well, stay yours, there, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Oh, oh mine, Maria. What was yours? Uh, the one with Chris Hemsworth. The one with Chris, Hem Chris Hemsworth, whose name the name of it is uh, escaping me now. The one that was on Amazon or wherever it was that they released it. Uh, oh, was it extraction or something? Taking a kid through uh... India. Yes. That yeah, 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 it was extraction, yeah. Okay, I have two for you. Um, yeah, if you want to press me for one, I, I can try and lean okay. on it. But uh, it is Sound of Metal, which, again, brand aside, oh, I think yeah. Riz Ahmed's performance is incredible. That was crazy. And, and it's kind of like yeah. a... a um, a sense that's not talked about as much. Like, there's a lot of movies about blind people, but the, the, to really... The, the sound design for that movie, especially in the end when he gets those cochlear implants is incredible. And then also mm. uh, Soul, I think is a, a, a great uh, Pixar movie. The, there's a moment in there that what, talks what? about- Oh, Soul, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah, a moment the, in there that, me. <laughs> that, that talks about how- I know that Soul um, likes that. Obsession yeah, like can just like turn you into something you don't wanna be. And I think Pixar does such a good job at- That's true. Taking these complex things and refining them to such like a singular thing that a child can understand that like passions can become obsessions and obsessions and aren't always great. Tear out yeah. your heart. Watch yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. Tear out my I, heart every time. I must have seen a different. Okay. I don't remember that part happening. You know what? When they go into like I can't remember the name the of That's the valley, but the place of like the the lost souls underneath. And it's people who have just like lost their passion. Right. right but it's also right. like it shows like what happens when you get obsessed and you can't get there. Um, but yeah, yeah th those two. All right, I've been messing with the same Adios. team for years. Bye, Marie. <laughs> <See ya. laughs> oh, gosh. Two great movies and a great Tenet. match. Oh, all right. Okay. Palm Sorry, Springs. I just had to throw well, just movies. Movies. Oh, Palm Springs. Yeah, oh, yeah I love Palm about Springs. About time. Hey. Yes. What, 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 uh, a, a really I want to throw title. in One Night in Miami as well. Oh, yeah. Great. I mean, uh, I, I have to go back and look, but like, Honestly, probably within the top 50 ever directorial debuts in terms of like, this is one, this is your output. Cause I mean, kudos to Regina King. She, she, she dominated that movie. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, Felix, unfortunately we now have to bid you adieu. We got a couple more matches to talk about, but I want to right. say first off, thank you so <laughs> much. Oh, look at the money. See, I know you'll be okay. I know you'll be just fine, but before yep. we officially say goodbye to you, sir, we want to go ahead and give every guest here a platform. If there's anything weighing on their hearts, anything they feel like they need to say to the people at home, the Schmodown world at large, whatever you have to say, man, the floor is completely yours. Yeah. Um, thank you, everybody. I, I Again, I hope you enjoyed the match. hope you enjoyed the character. Um, to follow anything that I'm doing, you can find me at, just at my name, at Felix Mort on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, go stream the Tomorrow War with Chris Pratt and, and then keep an eye out for that space because there's a ton of good content that's releasing over the rest of this year. There you go. Fair enough. Thank you. Wait, so can I talk to you about oh. getting the man in the high castle to come back, please? Can you <laughs> we'll, get that we'll back? Side chat. We'll get, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, Can't we, happen we, on the air. We, we can just talk about funding and then we'll figure it out. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Felix, you have a wonderful rest of your Saturday, man. Thank you. You all too. Thanks, Felix. Good to be here. Oh, yes, what such a, an underrated show. I heard good things about it, and I'll watch it someday. Probably. It will mess you up. There are moments you're like, 
Dang it, I shouldn't be rooting oh, for it'll this Oh, easily mess up. I got messed up watching the first two episodes of Hunter x Hunter because I recognized Matt Mercer too quickly. It completely <laughs> threw me out. But we can't be talking too much about Matt Mercer because we have something even better, maybe, to talk about. And that was this next match, the first match of the week. Page for Betty of the Usual Suspects going up against Rachel Silvestrini of The Den. Perhaps the most post-pounding match of the week. And thank God we have an incredible guest to talk about it. Making her return to the Ultimate Schmodown After Show with a record of one and one representing the aforementioned Usual Suspects. We are pleased as punch to have Paige for Betty back on the show. Hey. How are you doing? Hey, guys. No, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Of course. I love we- talking with your lovely faces. So thank oh, you. Like, oh, okay. Oh, Bugs, okay. Can- my Bugs. <laughs> Bugs can't handle compliments. That's what I, I, mean. I guess so. Yeah. He does have the better <laughs> accent, so maybe that's why. Oh, don't yeah. Know. You don't like mine? <laughs> uh, I love them all, guys. <laughs> of course. Well, Paige, thank you so much for coming on. We were so excited to see you back in the ring. And one of the other things that I just had to talk about right off the bat is the narrative for this match was very interesting, and I didn't necessarily expect it. But they kind of build up how both you and Rachel, for your respective uh, factions, are in some ways kind of like the hearts of each individual faction, just kind of the way you hear other folks from your factions talk about how much work y'all put in to like boost each other up. Like obviously they cut to both Ethan and Liz saying some incredibly wonderful things about you. So kind of going into this match, where was your head at as far as kind of, was that something you were even thinking about or was that just on the side, just as far as focusing on your game? Well, for me, like I'm so grateful where I landed on the suspects because we all we all put in the work to help each other and that's why i'm so grateful that i'm on this faction like i'm surrounded by greatness so i mean that just makes me feel so much like it makes me feel like i have to do so great which i've already want to do great so it already puts it like kind of like on a pedestal like all right i'm surrounded by greatness i need to kick butt and take names and hopefully i can be great too one day so that's kind of like my thought behind it all but no i'm just like so grateful for every faction member i have kind of in a sense but obviously like going into this match i was just like they've helped me out so much and vice versa so i was just like we got this win or lose i know i've been putting in the work so but i was not going oh and two so i had to make sure that i was just gonna play my heart out no matter what and i thought it was a great match so Oh, absolutely. I know you're saying, you know, you're just hoping to kind of, you know, be great. And let's not make any mistake. This match was great. Like, this is one of those matches I had to write down in my little side notes of, like, potential matches of the year when we start having that conversation. I love this match, but it's not me who's going to be breaking it down. That honor, of course, goes to Soul. So, Soul, how about you take us away, starting with round one, and Boggs is back just in time. Look at him. Oh, that's name is perfect. I love it. (laughs) So... I had to wear my Boston attire for you because I love it. I know I was going to say something when I first came on, but I was like, I'll wait till you mention it or I have a time to mention it. It looks fabulous on you, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank (laughs) you. But uh, I do have to say you wearing your Bruins uh, shirt, playing hockey that I love that in the promo. Where was the thought process of like, let me bring hockey into this promo? I mean, what not better to put two things like I love together, which is hockey and Schmodown. So I was just like, I'm, I mean, I love I love the promo aspect that we get to do. And so I was like, I want to do something fun. Like, yeah, we can do it from the comfort of our own home. But, like, that's, like, one of the best parts of the Schmodown are the promos. And, like, I wanted to do something that would entertain myself as a fan and others in a sense, too. And putting two things I love together, I was like, this is a perfect combination right here. So, Yeah, and it was definitely fun to watch. It was like, that's creative, bringing in. uh, We've seen some really good promos before Beth May. She brought in, like, boxing, which she does. So I kind of Mm -hmm. like this, like, bringing in other uh, physical elements from other sports into a promo for this sport. Exactly, and that's what I love so much about it because a lot of people, like, Schmodown isn't a sport. Hell yeah, it is because I live, breathe this. Like, this is what I do 24-7. Like, it's a mental game, and... You either there, you either got it or you don't got it. So, one hundred percent. But let's go into uh, as Bugs called you, Miss Perfect. There, uh, yeah. getting that your first perfect round in the Schmodown. Uh, Silver Streaming missing the Super Eight and the Joe Dante question. What was it like getting that first perfect round for you? 
Oh man, I mean, not gonna lie, I did not expect that at all to happen. I mean, the goal for me is to always go six or better in round one. Mm -hmm. If you don't make that happen, then there's issues. And that kind of will like, I, I don't know, I feel like it would like bring down your confidence a little bit. Like, cause I feel like the average right now in the league is probably like six in the first round. But for me, it was just like, especially as a singles player, you have to be so well-rounded. So that was my biggest thing was just like, all right, I need to study my butt off in like broad genres as much as possible. Like I love, like one of my big things that I do is I collect physical media. Like I love Blu-rays and stuff. So, I mean, I feel like that definitely helps too. Like I own so many different movies. So like having that, like kind of with me, like knowing like I watch all different movies all the time, like that definitely puts forth a good round one. So I was like very grateful that I was like, all right, I think I've seen like almost all those movies that every single question I got asked about. So I was like, that makes me feel good because I probably own them somewhere. So you need to go just pull them off the shelf right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got you. One second. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Colin, your thoughts on uh, round one? Yeah, you, know, you mentioned my favorite stat in all the schmodown. I championed it last year, right here on this show. Six and a half is the number you want to hit in round one, and if you because when you're looking at it. Six and a half under, even at six points, you're in Pulse of Felix numbers game right now. You're looking at a three point swing if they get a perfect round. So you're exactly. looking at a two question swing that you have to come around, possible three with multiple choice in round two. But if you can get that seven, that's a one question swing in round two. And that's much easier to ask for in this game than a three question. So oh, the yeah. fact that you got out to that three point lead and then, spoiler alert, kept it through in round two. You, it just seemed like you had control. You didn't let it go. You even felt so, like, your confidence in round two was literally pouring <laughs> out of the screen. I don't know if I've ever seen someone so comfortable in a Schmodown match. So hats off to you because that was you. really impressive. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't like Tarantino. Huh. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, no, your manager honestly, never worked with him either, right? <laughs> yeah, right? No, I mean, that's kind of nice that uh, my... Uh, go-to man mr sam levine has worked with him a couple times i was asking i was like do i get uh one of those like phone a friend situations if this happened because sam you might have to call him up for me real quick but uh <laughs> no i mean i'm not gonna lie i had no idea like th and that's the thing it's with the schmodown especially in like round one you have no idea what you're gonna get so kind of in a sense like you're just hoping for the best like never underestimate your opponent because you don't know what you can study as much as you want but sometimes you're just never going to be able to show and expand your knowledge in the game if you just don't get questions about it. But I guess I was just knew all the questions that I was asked, which I was just like, like, all right. I was calm and collective. And I feel like that's how you have to take each quest question. Because if you don't, then you make a little mess up. It can affect your next question kind of in a sense. Yeah. Calm, yeah. collected, and confident, I think, are the three words to describe oh, yes. this match. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But this was a great round two on both sides. Silver Streaming yeah. spinning Lucasfilm going perfect. You spinning Tarantino going perfect. And I think Silver Streaming showed that like it's not just Kevin Smith that she knows really, really well. So throwing over to John Barr, your thoughts on round two. Yeah, uh, I was very excited to see Rachel with that killer round two, not just because A, she shouted out the Flyers in her promo package, which, you know, obviously Philadelphia references, that's going to win me over immediately. But uh, obviously Rachel was a big presence uh, in the Schmodown for a while there, and I feel like uh, unfortunately just, I mean, not necessarily unfortunately, because we got a great crop of rookies over the past year and a half or so with the seasons, I felt like Rachel did not necessarily get as much shine for a second there. She was kind of talking about how it's her first time back in a minute. And I feel mm. like she like kind of needed to make a statement just to remind some folks like, hey, don't count me out for any second. And she absolutely did the damn thing, uh, especially, you know, going for six points in round one, which Con was saying is the exact amount she needed to keep this competitive. And then getting that eight out of eight perfect round two is just incredible. Like I was very pleased. But then on the other hand, you get that Tarantino round for Paige here and just completely knocking it out. And it's just one of those things where it's like, this was this is why I called it pulse pounding. Because it's one of those things where it's like, you kind of start to see like a, a gap form in points in round one. But then you see that perfect round two and you're like, oh, this is anyone's game. And then you oh, see yeah. a perfect round two again. You're like, no, this is anyone, anyone's game. 
And it just, it's one of those things where, again, maybe it was just all the hockey references up top, but it really felt like a sporting event. Like I was kind of like getting out of my seat. I was like, oh gosh, wait, what is going to happen? Like I was pumped for this soul. Yeah, it was a great match through and through at two great ladies playing too. <laughs> but uh, going into this round three, Silver Strini getting her two pointer, her three pointer, you getting that, that thing you do. Though I, I forgot that he directed that. I was like, oh, that's right. And then Kangaroo Jack, where's that love for Kangaroo Jack at? <laughs> Dude, exactly. Okay, just so funny. One, because probably like a week or two before my match was filmed, I was going through like a bunch of old DVDs that we, like, we have in our house and stuff. And I found Kangaroo Jack and I was just like, Dude, I love this movie. I don't really collect DVDs. I like Blu-rays more. But I was like, I got to keep this one around because this was like such a classic. Like when I was, I mean, not really younger because I think it probably came out in like the 2000s. But I was just like, I love this movie so much. Never in a million years. I don't think they've ever asked the Kangaroo Jack question in the Shmoda. <laughs> no. So I was just, when I got it, like I was literally like laughing out loud because I was just like, dude, I love this movie. Like what? I literally just like found the DVD I owned the other day. Like that's just so weird. Like it was just awesome to be able to get that because I was I laughed out loud kind of to myself. And I think I probably did laugh like during it because I was just like, I love that movie. Like that movie gets no love, and that movie's <laughs> awesome. So <laughs> you're allowed to enjoy the fact that you know that. By the way, like I think it's yeah. like, oh no, how dare you enjoy that you like and know that movie? Because it right. can in some sense there are you know. You could be like, oh, not taking it seriously. Have it too much. But bump all that. It was fine. Yeah, no, exactly. That. It is serious in round three. Boring but people, when, so. I, when I got that question, I just feel like I laughed a little because I was just like, I love that movie. Hit, and I was hop, literally, hit, and the funnier hit, part was, yeah, hit, right? Hit. And the funnier part was that <laughs> my aunt, like I work with adults with disabilities. And when my aunt was, when we were going through the DVDs, my aunt put it in a pile and by mistakenly, she brought it and gave it to, uh, one of her individuals, because she was like, oh, he'd love this movie. And then when I won my match, I literally texted and I go, did you give that movie away? Because I can't find it anywhere. And I want it back because I just won my match because of it. So I felt so bad, but I made him get it back for me. So. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm sure PJ was just like, I'm going to trick someone with this question. Not many people know what this movie is. And you were like, nope, I love it. Yep. But, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, Silver Sheen, unfortunately for her, she did miss her five pointer. So throwing to Boggs, your thoughts on round three. It's just your day, Paige, right? Like it just the, the first round went perfect and then spinning Tarantino and then the third round, like that kangaroo jack thing. It just it seems like because you know uh it seems like you work so hard and um it's just like the good karma, do you know, that it comes around like you're helping other your faction mates and it's just it was just your day, right? Just the uh, it just seems like it just it was in your wheelhouse and you played with just good energy after the last match, you know, and you wanted it so much and getting emotional afterwards, you know, it just brings uh, it's just nice to see, you know, like someone wants it that much and yeah. uh, and putting the work in. So, um, yeah, just how did it feel to get the first win finally? Oh, my God. Literally, well, it was just like going into this. I was honestly I was more nervous for this match. And I think than my first match because I was like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, like. Like, my first match, I was just like, win or lose, I just want to play well and perform well and just show that I'm meant to be here. This match, I was like, I can't go 0-2. Like, I care so much about this opportunity and being in the Schmodown and playing in it that I can't have this happen because I want to stick around. I want to be considered, like, one of the best female competitors in the league. I just want to be considered one of the best competitors in the league, just in general. So, for me, I was just like, I, I just have to stay focused and i don't have a life outside of this <laughs> literally wrote out has taken over my life and i don't mind at all because i really do want to be considered one of the best here and i just care so damn much about it that every time i get to do a study session with my faction mates even if it's just helping them out it's helping me out at the end of the day so for me if i can do that it's helping me so i mean it was just who it's very it's a unbelievable feeling to get your first w i feel like and now i just want more of it so that's i'm like give me my next match like what's next for me like i don't want the season just to end like oh yeah well yeah, i mean listen i know you shouted out uh thomas harper at the end of your match uh to try and drag him into singles but i would also say just looking at how the week went 
I kind of would dig the idea of seeing you go up against Jen Kemp, obviously, who's just coming off of a great game of her own. Mm-hmm. That was just one where I was immediately like, oh, boy, here we go. This is kind of – we're really getting to see a lot more of these kind of digital players that we haven't necessarily seen in studio. Let's get them in there. I really want to see some action. Like, this was incredible. Who, do you yeah. have any other ideas as far as who you'd want to – face now that you're not coming right hot off of the heels of your match <laughs> honestly whoever they want to give me i'll just take everyone out in the den because i keep playing them so Ooh. we can just keep doing that if they want i don't Ooh. mind that at all so i mean we shall see i'm just so grateful to be able to have the opportunity to play so whoever they want to give me i don't mind at all i mean jen camp and i were both boston chicks so that would be a fun one. The usual suspects PR is pretty good. That was a really good. Uh, that was some like NBA locker room. Like I'm just happy for my team. You know, just I'm thankful for the opportunity to be placed in this moment. And Pam is just like everybody. backstage making calls to Christian. Like Schmodown Boston happening right now. <laughs> I've been Get sitting all for the so Boston long players. that the pandemic happened. Like what? <laughs> If yeah, they're the doing next- one in New York, it's only a hop skip. It's a six-hour boat bus ride. They can make it happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Bus ride. Yeah, <laughs> boat bus, Colin. Don't talk to me. <laughs> no, there needs to be like a I was thinking the Peter Pan bus, but yeah, that one. Yeah, there. There. <laughs> there needs to be like a six or seven player, like just Boston uh, match, like JTE, U, <laughs> Jen Snyder. Kemp, yeah, Snyder. Like, yeah Snyder. there really is so many of us. Like, I think they need to make it happen at this point. It would be silly for them not to. I think it'd be funny, like, I, and I've always, and I will keep pitching this, but like, Schmodown All Star Weekend, that'd be so funny to be like New York versus Boston. All the players that claim New York, all the players that claim Boston, and it's like, go. That'd be sick. All right, Colin, can you like make some calls to make that happen? Just Look, curious. like, I'm telling you, Schmodown All Star Weekend would be the <laughs> hottest thing this league has ever done. You could have like people playing teams you would never even think of. Or like ah. East versus West, kind of like. Come on. Let's make it happen. Let's go. go. Come go. on, Eric. Let's go. <laughs> Eric, you can help us make this happen right now. Just That's saying. the start. <laughs> Talking about phone calls, yeah. Next time you're you're in a live event or whatever with Sam, get him to call uh, Quinton for you, right? Oh, uh, <laughs> well, so funny. I did a, uh, I did an Inglorious Bastards uh, quiz on uh, Video Chronics uh, page on Monday night. And, uh, and he was, like, telling us all these cool stories and all these props he has. And I'm just like, all right, Sam, so when I meet you in person, if anything goes missing from your place, I swear to God, it was not me. <laughs> if any <laughs> of your Nazi there. scalps go missing, like, yeah. you know, I just grabbed one of the scalps. Yeah, I didn't take your dog tags. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> or your red apple cigarettes. <laughs> but going back, echoing Boggs of the post-match interview, you getting emotional, and then on the other side, you have... Um, you- you have the, the den saying like you're so awesome and that they were shouting you out you had kate going like Paige is going to be one of the greats of this league what was it like just hearing that from someone like kate another manager who she's not in charge of you or what you do but she's noticing like how good and how hard working you are in this league oh i thought that i thought that was like so sweet i praise everyone in this league so matter like no matter what like when we're in the game like you are my enemy but at the end of the day i love everyone in the showdown and like rachel played like i think that was one of her best i think that was like probably her best like singles match and she gave me a run for my money and so just to hear that from her and kate like that just meant so much for me because rachel really has been playing all like every player she's ever played in singles have been like all amazing players she played liz she played Paul Preston, she played Roca, and she gave everyone a run for their money. So it's just nice that I guess they consider me like one of like the greater players that she got to play, kind of in a sense. But yeah, no, it's it's just like it's like cool and just amazing that like I guess other people are kind of seeing the work that I put into it, kind of in a sense. And we got some patrons that first before we bring Ooh. them in, they got some questions for you. But uh, John, Colin, Boggs, do you have any questions for Paige before? We asked the patron questions. How many games are the Patriots winning this year? Uh, dude, we are going uh, 16 and 0. Just throwing that out there. It, we are playing. Uh, Tom Brady's coming back, so let's see what that happens. I mean, we did draft that uh, rookie quarterback, so hopefully we get. Uh, Doesn't even Cam know Mac Jones' name. We're just, 
doesn't even know Mac Jones's name. I always forget. I'm, I'm a hockey girl, not a no, football girl. No, no, but for I think it's gonna be a. a, a you might want to hug on to that uh, to the Bruins and the Red oh, Sox I mean, for don't a worry, while. I, I, the, the, I, the Patriots, yeah. the Patriots boat got very small. There were so many <laughs> that jumped onto the giant Buccaneers ship last year. Well, that and also Julian Edelman just retired, and we need a quarterback can, that can throw the ball. So maybe we'll be able to see that with Mac Jones. Who knows? But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm hoping the best for the Bruins. We almost had it this year, so. Nothing but great happening. We just signed Taylor Hall for another four years, so I think we're set. That was so fucking Boston. That was awesome. That was so bad. <laughs> that was so, so, so awesome. <laughs> uh, so is... my question, my oh, question ahead, is, talk. you're a Star Wars girl. What are your thoughts about the Bad Batch so far? And did you see that Luke and Grogu poster? Like, that was beautiful. Oh, yes. So beautiful. And Bad Batch, I honestly, I am enjoying Bad Batch. I have watched... Uh, I do a show every Friday night uh, discussing it. Um, for me, the show, I feel like, is a little all over the place. I love uh, plot-pointed TV shows. Like, I like things that kind of have a rhythm th- through them each episode, kind of, in a sense. But for me, any Star Wars content, I'll take. And the fact that, like, we're seeing other characters pop in from other shows and such like that. Like, I love all those connections and stuff. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Will I ever play in the Star Wars division? Maybe if they do like an apprentice and a Padawong, and I can be the Padawong on the team or something. Well, but uh... who knows? We're just coming up with. You don't know what goes down. We're coming up with such good ideas for this row down here. <laughs> yeah, let's make it happen, Christian. You're listening, right? Yeah, like the apprentices' points are worth two points, and then yeah. uh, mm-hmm. they're all worth. Oh, double. I definitely have to be on a team with someone. Marie and Nikki can just carry me on their back the entire <laughs> way. So. <laughs> oh, but. Uh, Speaking of Boston, first we have a question from Jeremy Miller going, best movie set in Boston? Ooh, for me, The Town. I love that movie. I am I love Ben Affleck. He's back with Jenny from the block. My heart is just so full. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just love that movie. I feel like Boston, the backdrop of that movie is a character itself. I just, oh, I love everything about it. And you do a heist in Fenway Park, like what? Like, oh, such a good movie. Is Ted up there? Does Ted get love in Boston? It, no, it definitely does. Oh my! Well, so funny. We have Juice in the Schmodown who plays the guitar. We have in Boston. There's Ted the guitar player. Like this guy dresses up as Ted and he plays the the guitar. You literally can find him in like random spots of Boston, like Harvard Square, oh, yeah. uh, the Commons, like Newberry Street. That's like, awesome. I get I, it. I need you to take videos. <laughs> it's awesome. Need- videos and post it on the facebook group or something so that way we can all see oh i got you yes i will send you guys some it's it's pretty hilarious the guy can rip so that's all i'm saying (laughs) there's always a fun like local legends like that like we got philly jesus up in philadelphia just (laughs) totally just a man that is jesus is just walking around doing the work work. I mean, may need to go praise to him so that he can give me another W if I get another match this season. So, <laughs> I mean, you guys, you guys also have gritty. So, well, he is like an ancient Lovecraftian god. That's the issue. He's not. He's not benevolent like Jesus. That's a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> the next question here we have from Drunken Prayer going: What is the best bar in Boston? Ooh, best bar. I love dive bars. So for me though, ooh, I'm trying to think of some good ones. I'm not really a like hardcore partier. When I was younger, I definitely was. I'm not that old. I'm only 28. But when I was like in my early 20s, uh, for me, uh, oh my god, why can't I think of the name of the pub right now? Um, do 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 do. Hold on, I'm looking it up because I'm blanking on the name real quick. And I used to go there all the time. Have you ever been to the diner from Goodwill Hunting, or was that or the bar, the bar from Goodwill Hunting? Yeah, I think that's in uh, Cambridge, I believe. I felt that that's such a weird place. Like, they, they, it's such a Boston. perfect setting for them. Like, like these four out of place people in the most stuck up place <laughs> in all of Boston. All right, so all right, so my favorite dive bar is the Tam, which is I believe on uh, Tremont Street, which is kind of right near the Commons. And Howl at the Moon is like my, my other favorite bar. That bar just gets very rowdy and it's always popping there. So I feel like those two places, if you're looking for a really good time, definitely go to like Howl at the Moon. 
And if you're looking for like a good dive bar, definitely go to the, the TAM. I love that place. I like dive so bars. The, <laughs> I was going to say, when the Red Sox are playing or the Bruins are playing, there's probably a very rowdy in there, right? Oh, yeah. If you want that, definitely go like, you got the Bleacher Bar on Lansdowne Street and uh, Cask and Flag and too, like right over there. Those are always popping if you're right near uh, like Lansdowne Street, right near Fenway Park. Wait, say that one more time. Say Fenway Park one more time. <laughs> I'll say it <laughs> Fenway Park. No, 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 no. I want you to say it you say it. I like it. Fenway Park. Thank you. <laughs> I got you. Oh, boy. <laughs> and then we have Gif- yeah, we got Gift Taylor here. Who is a hockey player you enjoy watching the most who's not a Bruin? Ooh, that's not a Bruin. Hmm. I mean... <laughs> Bruins are my pride and joy. But, uh, I mean, oh. I definitely love, like, Ovechkin because, yeah, like, that man is old, but, like, he's still, like, so badass. Like, I mean, you can't say anything. And, I mean, obviously, i got to give Chara love. He's not on the Bruins anymore. And that man was our captain. So, much love to him. Wasn't he, like, seven feet tall on skates? Oh, yeah. It Giant. was nuts. Like, that dude's Giant. coming at you to hit you on ice while you're skating. Like, Giant no, no, thank man. You. Ridiculous. And uh, I'm trying to think if I have any other ones. <laughs> Boggs, have you ever, like, worn skates? Uh, Yeah, I've gone ice skating before, yeah. Yeah? How'd that go? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's okay, I guess. Oh no, we used to do hockey in school, like um, oh. not ice hockey, but um, oh yeah, you also were a floor hockey it. kid. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Floor hockey, the game, rubber ball, the day. Yeah, little yeah, orange yeah. ball. You know what it is, Chris in the chat. <laughs> Whoever you are. <laughs> Bugs is getting angry. We got to get to the next. Qu- so hurry, hurry. All right, next question from Malcolm. Thing. Even though you fit the usual suspects like a glove, I always wonder what would happen if the Boston badass joined the manager Boston badass Roxy Stryer. Did you ever consider how that would be? I mean, yeah, I I definitely did talk to Roxy like a, uh, actually the day of the draft. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd love to maybe one day down the line to be managed by like a badass woman. But I have the badass woman, Rachel Cushing, as my manager's better half. So I kind of win-win there no matter what. But, yeah, I mean, like I said, let's get an East Coast, West Coast uh, schmodown game. And Roxy can be – well, Roxy and Koi are both from Boston. But maybe they can both be the managers for the East Coast team. And then West Coast, whoever the hell else you guys want. <laughs> <laughs> whoever, who cares? <laughs> Some LA people. Love it. Yeah, some LA people. You know. <laughs> How dare you, Bob? 90% How dare of everyone you? else. <laughs> hey, you can keep repping Philly, John, even though you're in LA. <laughs> I try my best. I do so much. Hold on. No, I can't reach the hat. My headphones are too short. What's the next question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question. Justin T wants to know, who are some of your favorite directors? Ooh, uh, directors. I mean, for me, probably... Tarantino. <laughs> it was right there. It was I right there. It was the, the lowest of hanging fruit. At that point. <laughs> but uh, no, like Tarantino for me is a huge one. Uh, Spielberg. Uh, Denis Villeneuve, I think, is just killing it. He just, yeah. every film he comes out with is a masterpiece. How about that Dune trailer? Oh, what? I mean, the fir- I never read the book, but the David Lynch film, I was like, all right, well, that was a film. But um, <laughs> this one, I'm just like, <laughs> this one, I'm like, oh, my God. And it's got Timothy Chalabay in it. But I also love, like, uh, Wes Anderson. I love, uh, like, Wes Craven. Like, I love, like, all different genres of films and stuff. So it's kind of, like, depending on how I feel. But, like, for me, like, definitely, like, Martin Scorsese, Tarantino. Probably, like, Wes Craven, uh, Wes Anderson, uh, Spielberg. I don't know if I just said Spielberg or not, but. David Fincher also with the thrillers killing it. Like, it's just so I many think, greats. <laughs> I think Coy also is a huge uh, Fincher fan. So maybe it's just uh, in the Boston area, you just got to like Fincher. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, it's like, it's like a must. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw Edgar Wright out there. Oh, yes. Ooh. I didn't even say him. Oh, my God. Yeah. Edgar he had a Wright big week what? in the schmodown. 
<laughs> he did with that Scott Pilgrim miss. Oh my! Way. Ninja Ninja Revolution. I have so many <laughs> things to say when we talk about the next match. That's that was probably the bad. one inner geekdom <laughs> and, uh, question that I knew the answer to. But uh, yeah, Edgar Wright. What what am I saying? How did I not mention him? Yeah, he's amazing. If you didn't pull out a baby driver and drove a stick shift and not like burned your wheels, you know, like spun your tires out, so, like that's <laughs> oh, so good. So good. <laughs> And I think we, we got a Streamlabs too, yeah, didn't we? That's what I was just gonna oh, say. We also got a Streamlabs here. It goes, Colin, great minds think alike. Uh, we love money, <laughs> soul. We like money. <laughs> uh, which, if you want to ask Paige, the lovely Boston badass, a question, streamlabs.com slash the ultimate showdown show. But um, from Drunken Prayer, welcome Felix and Paige. Hope you both have fun coming on the show. So, like, he's just being super nice. And I think that's a great segue, John Barr. It, is he going to come back on? Well, wouldn't you know it, gang? It is that part of the show where we bring on some patrons, and one of them does happen to be Drunken Prayer. There he is. What's up? Hey. Welcome back. Hey. Oh, God. It's you guys again. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were still watching Pig, didn't you? Yeah, I got, uh, yeah, sorry. I was got distracted. I was just dodging around Nicholas Cage for a bit longer. <laughs> hey, Paige. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. How's it going, man? Uh, not bad. I almost got told I wasn't coming in because I was running about my room looking for my lightsaber to. Oh on, so man, that would be so epic! I'll yeah, show you some of my cool it. Star Wars tattoos then. Oh, I was actually, there you go. Too, so. oh, cool. I don't. Cool. I don't have to ask that question because I actually wondered about that, but now I get to ask a different question. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I uh, found that instead. Oh uh, shit! That's that's pretty awesome. Do, 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 yeah, unfortunately, do, 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 do. my wee, my wee nephew has lost the droid out the back. <laughs> oh, no. Lost somewhere in the Dune Sea, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I <laughs> uh, can't remember what the question. Oh, by the way, dive bars. Thank you. I will be visiting both of them if I ever make it to Boston. Oh yes, you <laughs> got to, man. As long as you uh, take us to the dive bar in Scotland, like it has that, to be both ways. <laughs> that's just every, that's, yeah, that's every just every bar over here. Every pub. Yeah. I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, was, and then I dark low to to Scotland Then so you know, who would McGregor? <laughs> Can you hook me up? <laughs> uh, no, no, but I have actually met Ray Park, who played Darth Maul. Oh crap! No way. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he was running back from a uh, Aikido practice in Edinburgh. <laughs> that's epic. Weird. I didn't even know who he was at the time. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> my mate did though. So my mate said my mate recognised him. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, Paige, you got a question here. here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Uh, sorry, coming back to it, I was going to ask about the tattoo, but you've explained that. So, how familiar are you with the Boston music scene, and who your favorite Boston band? I mean, yeah. I mean, I I used to actually work in radio. I worked for an alternative rock station uh, for like four years. So I definitely love like like kind of like indie rock or like uh, like alternative rock in a sense. For for me, like obviously, like. I gotta give a shout out to uh, the Dropkick Murphys. Like, of course. Yes. Duh, okay, like, have to bring you. that out. Like, That's we that. also have, like, the Mighty Mighty Boston's, like, and then, like, some, like, like smaller bands. Like, the band Paris is, like, one of my favorite bands. They're from, actually, like, Lowell. Uh, and they're actually about to go on tour soon. So, go support, guys. Yeah, you oh, have and Errol Smith, who is is from Boston. What? No one ever talks yep. about that. So, <laughs> Pixies as well, apparently. I don't know if all of them, the Pixies, at least a few of them are from Boston. Yeah, I think a few of them are, yeah. And Letters to Cleo, special show just because they're on a lot of 90s soundtracks. <laughs> but you but had the me music the second... scene out here is killer, though, I must yeah. say. Nope, all you right. had my love at the mighty, mighty. You had my love when you said uh, Dropkick Murphys. I was like, okay, yep. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Can you play us a little something, Paige? You've got a guitar in the background. Right? I cannot play any Dropkick Murphy. I can play you some nice, like, uh, Smoke on the Water or, like, Sunshine of Your Love. Like, the intro, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> but, like, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but, uh... <laughs> How much of a speed bob is it for that? <laughs> <laughs> In the off-season, I that's, got you guys. Good, yeah. I'll whip out the ukulele if you guys want, because that's easier yeah. to whip out real quick. My best friend was the president of the ukulele club at high school. That's what? what- yeah, like, yeah, I that's how you said that. that. That's like, hilarious. The whole club? Yeah, and I was the second member, and I never got a ukulele, and he's still never forgiven me to this day. I mean, this okay. is definitely not tuned, guys, but I'll play a little something. Go ahead. Oh, God, God. Mm. Yes. yes. You're in the band. <laughs> 
<laughs> give us some stream labs guys and maybe i'll play some more for you, you yeah. <laughs> there you go there, there you go, go. We'll we'll see see you you say. Say. and then we have a second patron dropping in as well starting some beef with mike in the chat looks like but we love him regardless it's alan smithy what's hey, going hey. on Hey. How's it going, everybody? Well, Mike was kind of saying that Denis Villeneuve is the best working director today, and I was just saying he's the second best director working today. Those are fighting anyway, words. He's coming sir. in. He's in. To though. himself, Mike. To himself. This is a joke. This is ride the wave. I like though that Mike acknowledges my existence as a director. That's nice. But anyway, Paige, congratulations on your win this week. It was awesome. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah. So you were talking, you like Spielberg. I'm wondering, like, give us your favorite Spielberg movie or maybe like top two or something. <coughs> Ooh, favorite Spielberg movie. Ah, uh, for me, hmm. I'm going to, I have a letterbox. Let me look it up real quick. I felt that Super 8 was just like a salty, like, like produced by Spielberg. I can't Spielberg. look that. You it can't say right Super 8 because he right right produces there. it. So that's mm. just not fair. That's okay. You can go productions or like, you know, okay, like you a lot of Robert Zemeckis movies that were produced, like Back to the Future. Yeah. I mean, for me, though, like, like in my top five, like favorite movies of all time is definitely like E.T. Obsessed oh, with yeah. that movie. 1982, I'll give you guys release dates and everything. Ben Bateman thing got shit on me when it comes to release dates. Uh, <laughs> tell him, girl. You tell him. All right. I know for me, definitely like E.T. Uh, obviously, Jaws is such a classic. Yeah. I do love the indie Ooh. movies. I'm not like die hard into them, but like I enjoy yeah. them. They're definitely a good time. All right. And uh, are you coming to L.A. for the uh, spectacular? Uh, and you, are you are you going to go to Quentin Tarantino's movie theater, the new Bev? That's what I was you at. bet your butt I will be there. That is for sure. I'm already look. Well, they haven't posted their uh, schedule yet for what's going to be coming out, and like they always do double features and stuff. But oh, right. uh, nope. Yeah. Once I come to LA, hell oh, to yeah. the yes, I am going to that theater. I see Tarantino's book back there behind you. So hey, yeah. Shout right. out. Well, Unfortunately, I haven't had time to read it yet because uh, I've been doing so much studying. Wait, go sideways. That's thick. Yeah, it is. No, he thick. didn't mess around yeah. with this. He didn't. It's... Yeah, and it's cool. It has like oh, old like throwback ads in it too. Oh, cool. Which is really cool. I mean, awesome. Sam. Sam did spoil to me if uh, Cliff Booth uh, did kill his wife or not. Oh I was like, Damn it, no. Sam! I haven't even read it yet. Oh, like. that's in the book. <laughs> Interesting. I would wager that he did kill his wife. That's my thinking. But anyway. that, that's what I'm going with too. But I guess I'll have to find out because they actually give us a clarified answer. So, all right, cool. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy LA. That's where I'm at right now. So I just oh no way about my hometown. Uh, and wish me luck because right after this show, I have a Patreon match within this very Patreon, and uh, I'm going to be Title fighting match, hard for yeah. a win. Title so, match. hey, good, good luck, luck man. You got good this. Good luck. Thank you very much. There you go. And a powerful plug for the patreon.com slash John Roca. Have I plugged that enough during the show? You could play I don't me. You could play box. Get in there. You think you're smarter than us? You think you're better than us? Show us in the patron league. Come on. Yeah, right above my head. You can't blame me, but I'll know. I'll know what you know. <laughs> sure. But what I know is that Paige... You are a great. Already, I'm calling it now. You've brought in two incredible performances, and we're all so excited to see what Performance 3 has in store. That said, we do want to let you go ahead and enjoy the rest of your Saturday because you've already been so kind to share so much of your time with us, but we just want to give you just a, a brief bit of uninterrupted time. If there's anything you want to tell the schmo down world at large, the floor is yours, Paige. Ooh, I love when you guys say the Boston Badass. As it rolls off the tongue so nicely with all of you guys. But yeah, no, thank you guys for having me on. And you guys can check me out on Instagram and Twitter at frontpagenews9. Uh, and also I run my own movie blog on Feature Flicks without the C. And maybe if you guys are cool enough, hold on, let me whip this bad boy out real quick. I'll play some extra songs for you guys real quick on my ukulele. But yeah, other than that, guys, I hope you guys see the Boston Badass soon, soon in the Schmodown. So I guess wait and see, guys. And wait and see, we shall, Boston Badass. You have a lovely rest of your day, and we'll speak to you next time. Yes, love you all, guys. Thank you guys so much again. Have a great night. You too. Oh, gosh. Well, gang, as luck would have it, we even get a third match to talk about. A uh, friend of the show, Jesse Swift, 
of the Quirky Mercs going up against Jacob Witnabent of the Usual Suspects, Sam Levine's faction, as we were just lucky to speak to a different member of the faction. Uh, this one I'm going to be tossing it on over to Colin to break down. We, you know, we love both of these gentlemen. We love them. And the managers were right in the kind of post game. This was a defensive match and played well, all things considered. It, it was a little tough at times. Colin. Sir, this reminded me, and Boggs, this would go right over your head. This was a winter AFC North struggle field goal like game. Like no touchdowns, just field goals. It's like 13 to to six at the end of the game you're like what did i just watch did i just spend three hours doing this but it was still gripping the entire time you could not take your eyes off of it because you were waiting for somebody to take control of this match and it literally took until the last question for somebody to truly take control of this match let's get right into it right off the top we got wit witten ben i'm gonna get this right missing the captain marvel question then Jesse coming right around, missing that San Francisco question, going with San Jose. Still in the Bay, not quite San Francisco. Both missing the Batman 1989, who plays the mayor question. And then what I believe was a five-pointer. Possible, Ooh. like, could have been, if, if, if this was a five-pointer or in the third round, this was a question for it. The Ninja Ninja Revolution Scott Pilgrim versus the World pull was really just PJ saying, that's one of my favorite movies. And if you know me and you know this league, you need to watch that movie and know it like the back of your hand because PJ will pull them out. And there are deep, deep cuts in that movie. Both missing the Prometheus Damon Lindelof question. Boggs and I cried amongst all Lost fans crying in that moment. Ending 6-6, six, six. we still have a tight, tight contest here. Boggs, these 10-point IG rounds, you know, kind of sway the stats a little bit, right? They got 10 questions in round one, so both missing four. Did you feel that anybody, you know, eked out an advantage here? Was there any momentum that either, car uh, either player gained? Uh, not really, not at this point, no, because they were both missing... Um kind of one at a time i felt like because they're both coming off losses so probably knocked their confidence a little bit but knowing the end of the round was a draw i think that balanced it out but it wasn't the easiest round uh one i've ever heard in ig so quite a variety of questions um so yeah i mean i was just a bit disappointed in jesse no rap this time in his promo you know he did a little rap against amaru so. i'll let him know he didn't do that, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, I did like his T-shirt. He had a cool Superman T-shirt, but yeah, I was good. He didn't do that, but oh, did you yeah, get no. that? That was very meta. Yeah, Superman, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, loved it. And uh, Koi had one as well, right? If I remember. Yes, everybody. Uh, yeah. Um, just yeah, uh, I'm sure that wasn't referencing anything, but yeah, no. Overall, um, rough round on both, but at least it kept it as an entertaining match. So they were drawing going into the second round, which is obviously going to make a a difference. So I just thought both of them needed to, because coming off losses. Both need to make an impact in round two and show and show some authority. And um, we kind of did, but it wasn't expected, if that makes sense. But Yeah, let's just now. get right into round two. Jesse spinning opponent's choice, unfortunately getting thrown Planet of the Apes, which to me might be the most dangerous category for somebody under the age of 35 in the Schmodown because there's just not... They, those movies were not on TV like they were for uh for the upper age echelon of the schmodown they were just plugged all over because how you know willingly they were to put them out and jesse just really struggles here as as i suspect most people would i believe most of these questions were like i mean he's thinking like i don't even know this so i'm just gonna say cincinnati because i don't know what city they went to because it could be any city in america and it just making it extremely hard wouldn't been couldn't pull any of the steals that were offered just because look at how hard these questions were jesse only coming away with two possible points and then went and been coming out with five when he spins middle earth so the score is 11 to 8 i will throw it over to soul i mean i felt like you wrote some of these questions my girl <laughs> these were dangerous like these emphasis on danger yeah, this was one of those rounds where you're watching and you're like, your your heart is breaking for both Oof. players because you're like, what are these questions? That they're they're so like PJ doing a great job bringing out no stops here, 
But yeah, it was, you could see it too, Jesse Swift going first and like only getting two points and you can kind of see him getting a little bit defeated. And then you have Witten Ben going, getting five out of 10 points, goes not doing as well as he could in the round, but still doing a little bit more than Jesse. And so it kind of, you had that moment there of like Jesse feeling really bad and you could see it. And then you could, and then Koi going, no, get your ass back in gear. We're going to a round three. I love when Koi was like, don't do that. Don't do that. Immediately. He saw Jesse's face and was just like, no, we're not playing this game. You're getting your ass back into this game. You're going to play well. Uh, going forward so I kind of liked that the managing of Koi there and it just like it was a heartbreaking round too yeah and to be uh remissful remorseful uh, whatever I've something full if I didn't <laughs> mention the uh it can missing the multiple choice in Jesse's first miss and mm -hmm. uh allowing Jacob to get another question which he did go on to miss as well so it was just you know one of those things you're throwing out the numbers he remembered the numbers at least it wasn't like he said yeah. a number that you know wasn't one of the options so he still had one of the ones in his mind uh but good to see that the game was you know keeping to his rules and that everybody you know behaved admirably in that sense moving on to round three this is where life gets interesting swift gets his batman forever question with uh which one did drew barrymore show up in and also nailing the john carter question which like when that is something you can I mean, you gotta kind of pronounce those names like you're reading Dune. Like, sure, just roll with the emphasis on whatever syllable those words are, and still nails it. And then throwing it over to Wittenbin, getting the Bogart question, and then missing Lawrence Fishburne in Predators, which that's another category that I think falls into that Planet of the Apes, where it's just there's some of those movies that are just have a deeper impact on some. And even the newer ones, if you don't have an attachment to the old ones, I don't have any real like thirst to go out and watch those predators movies the second they come out but i know there are people that are and that's why it's in this division now swift then going on to miss that uh the five pointer which was uh pacho via pacho via pacho, pacho right? so. close yeah. enough yeah sure. <laughs> and then sending it over to the five pointer for wittenbin all tied up at 13 13 Pulling out the mo I mean, come on, y'all. There's just some IG movies that you know these movies exist. And PJ loves to pull him a Rocketeer or The Shadow. And this strikes again, sending us to sudden death. So I throw to my man, the myth, the legend, John Barr. It is 1313. It is the unluckiest of numbers. And we have, these guys have just had an unlucky time with questions up to this point. Absolutely, yeah. Like I, I would disagree with the assertion that this match was a hot mess. I would call it more just like standing in the brutal cold. You know what I mean? It's just two players yeah. on like starting line, like a full snowstorm is kicked up, and they're just trudging through that snow, trying to clear their eyesight in order to get to that finish line. We got to see a nice little moment at the top of round three, obviously, where they both kind of started to pick up a little bit more momentum, feeling their comfort zones a little bit. But yeah, I, I think unfortunately that first round just kind of set the pace to a certain extent where it was just sometimes you get those movies that are in your blind spots. And obviously it's very easy for somebody like me, an idiot, to be watching the match and be like, ooh, yeah, this is tough to watch. But again, just trying to like put yourself in those shoes, like sometimes there's a lot of movies. Like as uh, Jesse himself pointed out, 300 movies in Inner Geekdom. Think about how many more are in general play for singles and teams. That's a lot of movies. You simply can't see them all. It's simply not possible. Or if you see them all, you're not going to retain a lot of what you see because to see them all, you're going to have to play them at like two times speed. Right. Like it's crazy sometimes. You just, excuse me, you just get hit with things you don't expect, like that belch. I'm sorry about it. And at the end of the day, you know, I think you can't call either of these players bad for not remembering a crystal skull moment, for not remembering the shadow I don't blame anybody for trying to think about those movies as little as possible. And at the end of the day, like, you know, there was any moment throughout this match where the players could have just well and truly given up, right? Yeah, they did. That thing, was fantastic. Like, Jesse could have very easily just completely just been like, yeah, I don't know. I don't care. Let me just guess whatever. We've seen it like with Jeff Snyder, for instance, where sometimes he'll get a category that he knows he doesn't no, and then he'll just like completely like you know spaz in his chair it's like a nexus event in low you leave jeff alone all right i won't 
I won't <laughs> because I have to talk about him in order to make sure we give Jesse and Jacob their due. Okay. Both know. of them got hit with things they just didn't know, and they kept their heads down, and that's how we got to sudden death. You can't be mad at sudden death. Like, Ever. I don't like, care how you get there. Match overtime is overtime. Yeah. Free I will say football. that. The I, I know even after the match, uh, Wittenberg was talking about he kind of knew his five point. Uh, maybe should have guessed it, but I think the match was lost for Witt. Wittenberg played the better match, um, particularly in round two and stuff. I felt, but he just didn't get a steal. He had five opportunities to get a steal. Four opportunities, sorry, to get a steal. Obviously, Jesse got his first one, I think, and then the next four were multiple choice. He missed each one of them. If he'd have got one of them. He would have won the match. So I think that's where it was one of us. He had unpoor opportunities for a steal that, and it just it slipped out. So then let's look at that. Let's break that down for a second, boss, because you hit a stellar point. Because then you're looking at that from a strategical standpoint, and that does not reflect well on the decision-making to give somebody a category for opponent's choice that you don't maybe it, it maybe not have been the choice of i know this it was the choice of he does not know this and that might have been the pros and cons that won out in the day and maybe the the play of maybe yeah, give myself part. you know maybe give myself a shot for some of these ones but knowing jesse and how diverse his knowledge is i do say it is it, it behooves the opponents for b opponent's choice to go into these like dystopian time travel, these newer ones that definitely these players aren't familiar with. It definitely it it just changes this whole inner geekdom game. I thought I understood this completely and that it's like the NBA and they move the three point line back another four feet. So it's like here, shoot even further. And it's just been too much fun to watch, which gets us to Sean Wingblade's question uh comment in the uh, comments which i thought was fantastic there are managers that are great because they have a great team then there are managers that lace up their boots and go to work and koi is the latter koi will always be up for manager of the year in my opinion and i think that plays over to what john was saying about how and john and souls points the moment where koi comes in before round three corrects jesse's round two mindset sends him into that round three and then sends us into sudden death where all he needs is one question, knows the answer, and Jesse Swift wins 14 to 13. And that is, you know, an into one of the wilder matches of the season. I know you put match of the year up for the last match we talked about, but this was still just, I mean, entertaining in a different way, right? Like you can have a high scoring affair where it's, you know, whatever, high scoring, get low scoring games that are tighter, still a tight game, John Barsh. Yeah, well, and it's interesting to note, like, my math might be a little bit off on this. I'm not a big mathematician, but at the end of the day, I believe at this point in time, Quirky Mercs are actually sitting at number three. They are in, in the third place. Yes, sir. Behind the Dungeon and the Finstock Exchange. And that's, again, one of those things where, you know, sometimes it's tough to get that win, but Jesse just got himself three points for the Quirky Mercs. That's not nothing. That's specific numbers, like... That, it was that numbers that got them uh, out of, I believe, a tie situation with corruption for that kind of third or fourth place spot. So, like, that's one of those things where it's like it's all about the constant fight because even when you get those questions, now there is this wider context to every single throwdown match. And I think Koi is someone that understands that and he knows how to find the balance between being the fun, goofy guy like, oh, me and my players, we just want to have a good time but then also making sure that the players stay focused on what they're doing. Like they're having a fun time playing the schmodown. They're not just having a fun time for uh, poops and giggles. I don't know why we're allowed to curse on this channel, but who cares? It's one of those things where I think Koi is just very focused now on what the schmodown is. And I think it, it showed a little bit more so, I think in the latter half of the Quirky Merc season last year, but this is a season where right now the pieces are really falling into play. Like Jesse said in his promo, they're holding two belts right now, or three belts because it's two titles. Right. Again, math. Don't ask me these questions. Colin, <laughs> I swear to God, yeah. if you ask me more questions yeah. with numbers, I'm going to freak out. I will well, say, I'm John Barr, you were probably saying poops because you're remembering uh, Kate's child. I had to make a poopy in that post-match interview for that last match. So yeah, that was that child. Point. That's what I forgot. <laughs> I'm Kate's biological son, and I was getting really <laughs> antsy during... Y'all are too much. Well, folks... If you want to support this show, if you want to support these four above average looking faces, support us at www.streamlabs.com slash the ultimate Schmodown show. And like I mentioned before, if you want to 
maybe answer questions written by somebody on the screen who is one of the best question writers I have ever answered questions from in the world and maybe even go up against three of the four faces on here. Who knows who might d- d- drop in One day. the ring in this patron league that we got going on. www.patron.com slash John Roca is where you can find all of that information. The Discord is such a wonderful place. It is a beautiful community of people who just love to talk movies, love to talk TV. We do everything in there. We got all your spoiler stuff too for all the m- current shows that are going on right now. And it is just an awesome place. Which brings us to, I believe, John Barr... Um, the struggle for last place between well, you and so, I. Well, and, and that's the thing, because we have to bring on our, uh, well, our producer, Mike Well, um, and I, I think so, Mike and uh, Sean's points need to be combined. I think that would be well, No, <laughs> I, I would disagree. I would disagree. You just want to not be in last place? Well, so, here, I mean, Mike, <laughs> we're so happy. We're so happy to have you, because you're a great guy. You're hilarious. You know all this kind of production stuff. You are a veteran. Best of voice this, in the biz. Best voice in the biz. It doesn't hurt my feelings to see a, a, a number. You don't know is, math, but you know that two is not as much as 43. That's the one thing I took from 12 years of academia is that the numbers 42 and two have a slight difference. <laughs> uh, but speaking of those, yeah, no longer will I say John Barr is in last place. It's Mike Shea is in last place. With two points. Hey. John Barr with 43. <laughs> and then Quite you have enough. Colin with 44. Myself with 55. Uh, Sean with 58. And Boggs still in the league with 62. Like, come on. And that's the problem with math is you can't <laughs> really prove really that awesome. there's a difference between 43 and 63. There's no way of really knowing. Because there's no, when I was many sitting numbers in, pre-cal, in those numbers. You know what I, I mean? I sat in pre-cal and had a man tell me that one equals zero he spent 40 minutes on the chalkboard proving that one equals zero and wow. that was one of the wildest things i've ever seen in my life so you might even be in first place john Bar. i don't know wow what a pervert uh we're gonna go ahead and jump into the first <laughs> the first match that we gotta talk about it's a normal regulation weekly match nikki Dimolanta of the usual suspects giving him a lot of love this episode Going up against John Hoey of the Dungeon 1 and 0 in the Star Wars division. Uh, Mike, I'm going to bounce it on over to you first and foremost. Who do you have winning this match? You know, no disrespect to the to the Dimolanta family, but John Hoey is my boy. I love John Hoey. I got to give it to John Hoey. That's fair, man. That's fair. Yeah. Short and simple and sweet. Yeah. Uh, Bugs, what about you? I think we did our picks last week. I mean, yeah, this was one of the matches that got again. pushed. So it's yeah, fine. so um, I went over here. Colin? Yeah, I went with John as well. I've, I've, I've been uh, a bit more eagle-eyed in on his uh, Twitter activity with what he's been. And the dude is just on. He's on top of all this. So, I mean, I, I it falls under the, like, I don't want to pick against Nikki because I know, you know, who she trains with. But at the same time, I'm not going to disrespect John's knowledge. And I want to, you know, show me what you got. Kind of one of those things. But taking John. Absolutely. So how about you? My love is for Nikki DeMolanta. So it's going Nikki DeMolanta. And that is also Sean's pick. There you go. Two votes for Nikki DeMolanta. Who I'm very excited to play. Obviously, I only have so much time in the world to watch so many things. So I've not seen Nikki's uh, show that she hosts with Andrew. Uh, so I'm very excited to see what she knows, just kind of going into this blind for me personally, seeing what she knows. But having seen John Hoey play and play quite well, I'm going to also be gone with John Hoey. And now, if I'm not mistaken, at this point in time, that's going to lead us right into these collision matches, which we've talked a little bit about before on and off time to time. But now it, now it's crunch time, gang. Now I'm going to be now, holding now y'all. Nikki's, uh, now Nikki's lesser half will be playing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Andrew. Demolanta. And might we mention that this event is free. Yeah. Free, folks. You do not have to pay for this event. The wonderful folks at Captain Morgan, you better be drinking it, folks, as I know I will be. That's fair. Uh, Bugs, we'll start off with you. The Star Wars title match, Andrew Demolanta of the quirky mercs going up against laura kelly of swag the rematch it's happening 
who do you have winning? Oh man, really tough. Um, but I'll go with the man that pulled off the upset, um, Di Melanta. Uh, you know, I love Laura Kelly as a player, of course, but uh, yeah, I just think he's that momentum that he's got being Alex back to back twice. Um, yeah, I think that just kind of I, I'd pretty much put him up against anyone at this point um, on this on this on this night. So yes, definitely Di Melanta to retain the title for me. There you go. Colin, what about you? Are you predicting a second defense for Andrew? It is so incredibly hard in any of the four divisions in this league to defend. Much less do it twice. Di Melanta is a special character, and he is a special talent. And he has been able to raise his ceiling time and time again. And I think he will do it again. And I think he will be pushed. One question will be missed in this match. And it will determine the entire thing. I'm taking Dima Lanta. There you go. Soul, also the keeper of Sean's answers. Uh, what do the both of you have to say about this one? Well, I'm, I was only the keeper of Sean's answers for the first one. I don't actually Ooh. have Sean uh -oh. for this. Uh-oh. <laughs> but swag, swag, drip, drip. That's all I need to say. <laughs> There you go. That's right. So she is rooting for Lon Harris. Weird choice, but all right. That's an upset. I dig it. Uh, for me, you know, I, I, I don't want to bet against the Demolantas two for two. Uh, and it's also one of those tough things, kind of like uh, Colin was saying, you know, it, it, the Damon dynasty was so long and so illustrious and now it kind of feels like maybe the belt is kind of going to maybe do some hot potato just because it's hard to say. Like, we've had years with Alex Damon, so it's kind of hard to picture anyone else taking it. And so now the idea of it getting passed around even more is a little bit uh, hard to, to imagine. If there's anyone who can do it, it's Laura Kelly. And I think I'm going with Laura Kelly. I think that's I think that's what I got to do. I was going to say Andrew DeMolanta, but I'm like – no, I feel like right now Laura Kelly is maybe the person who's going to be able to pull it off. Just thinking about, you know, oh, it's so tough. It's so tough. Star Wars is so difficult. And I'm going to go with Laura Kelly. I don't have any justification other than it sounded right when I said it. Uh, Mike, what about you? Um, I think from what I've seen in the past, like you, I I don't want to bet against the Dean Melantas twice. Um, but I'm going to. And uh, I... I feel like with uh, with Andrew, I've seen him get in his own head before, and I think it's I think it's going to. There's a lot of pressure here, and I worry that it might get the best of him again. And so, for this, especially with it being such a big event, it's collision. Um, and so, I, I, I think, and, and Laura, I think it's her time to it's her time to shine. Laura is probably my favorite Star Wars player, and so I, I think she's going to take this one. And I think it, I think it's going to be a knockdown drag out. They're going to push it all the way to the end, um, and who, they're going to make each other work for it. But I think it's going to go to Laura in the end here. Absolutely, it's really going to. I think this match is also going to kind of define what the rest of the year in Star Wars looks like. If we're in for another just kind of Wild West situation where folks are taking the belt left and right, or if we have the beginning of a new dynasty on our hands with Dimolanta. Uh, but that Quick prediction, just... if, uh, if Laura does go on to lose that match, I see her and Ace being the swag final of the next Star Wars tournament. Oh, fast. I think that would be prime time television well and you want to get stipulation with it i think the winner wins the spot for the team next year and they're not having like this like two horse not know who to play with enough points type thing could be interesting <laughs> to watch could be could be I'd one thing that. that'll definitely be interesting to watch is saul of the den multiple knockouts to his name going up against amaru moses of the usual suspects, I, the usual suspects tearing it up so far in this kind of uh, week and a half span of time. I'm going to have to start with you, Colin. I see the hands on your face. I know you're scared. I know you don't want to, but you simply must, dear boy. You must. Who do you think is going to win this match? 
Okay, so both of these guys are so incredible in different ways. Like, the presence that they both bring. Amaru brings this calmness, this poise, this immense breath of knowledge. And then Saul will just punch you in the back alley, telling you you're stupid because you don't know it. And I know it, and I'm better than you. And I don't know which one of those attitudes is going to win out. Because Saul's confidence will can carry him quite far and i think it's an it's an imposing force that he lays down when he walks into the ring man i think amaru is gonna pull this one off i think amaru is on a war path right now and i have faith in this man i have faith that he will win the day there you go that's one vote for moses uh soul i'm gonna bounce it on over to you who do you have not only do I think he's a force to be reckoned with, but his name is close enough to my name, so I'm going Saul. That's very fair. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this one is tough to watch. I feel like it's even tougher because, and obviously this is no fault of Amadou's, this is no fault of anyone's really other than technology, but if you're trying to like look back at matches leading into this, obviously uh, Amadou having a, a tough match to watch back against moose uh just because of again technological problems that are out of anyone's control we can't hold that against anybody but when i just think about momentum i have to go to salt i have to just thinking about how hard he's been going at this division again i believe being another guy that was not drafted to be an inner geekdom player but was picked up to be like a singles player stepped up to the plate and then it's just been taking names since this like from the moment he first stepped into the ring against Brandon Hanna, like the immediate intensity was so much. And you're right, like Amaru has got this great, like kind of calming presence, but uh, Saul just took two kind of good times people and ate them and then hung up their heads on his wall like he's craving the goddamn hunter. So I think at this point, I gotta, I gotta I give that. it to Saul. Thank you. It's a good, he's a good guy. No, he's not. He's a bad guy. Craven's really not a good guy. It's fine. He's the problem is I just read a really good comic in which he's sort of a good. It's very new. If you go read Hunted by Nick Spencer. Oh uh, yes, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a fair yeah answer. bad dad. Uh, I'm going with Saul. Mike, who do you have winning? So, I learned the hard way some time ago to never bet against Mr. Moses. <laughs> when, when, when he, when oh, right. he that down. that's a pride thing you can't pick against the dude that beat you at this point right no a pride thing would be voting for the I here. i can't sit here and be like how's he gonna win when he beat me so and, and amaru is amaru is so zen in in this kind of thing i mean so i it, it, i can't you can't pick against him. you can't pick against him. it's it, it's it would cause me physical pain it's hurting right now just thinking about it. I have a raging headache. It could be from just sitting here for two hours. I don't know. But it, it's a pick against Amaru would be would be ridiculous. I'm sorry to anybody who did, but you're ridiculous. Fair enough. I've been called ridiculous so many times for various reasons. Bugs, bouncing it on over to you. Who do you have winning? So I kind of think that Saul wants it a little more. But I know that Saul's mentioned in a few interviews that he you know, he gets rattled in matches and he, he uses that as a positive. But I don't necessarily like that as a player. I like composure under any circumstance and Amaru has that. Um, he has, I believe he has more composure. And under the lights, under the pressure, with a crowd there, I think that Amaru is going to pull it off. Um, either way, it could go either way, don't get me wrong, but I just think that he's got that extra bit of, like I say, composure, calmness. Um, so, yeah. Um, maybe um, I don't know something. To, and the Saul's super quiet as well on social media. Normally he's loud and you know talking about matches or this and that. He's just gone super quiet for some reason. So um, I don't know if it is. Amaru doesn't. You know he's not hiding. He's on his socials. So that's just something I've observed. I could be totally wrong. Just that's just a random thing I've seen. But uh, I'm gonna go Amaru. Fair enough. There you go. And that brings us into the second match for the Mercs in this collision but the first of two mercs versus corruption matches we have a number one singles contender match on our hands with kevin smith the director going up against marisol mckee the philadelphian 
Uh, Soul, I'm going to start off with you. Who do you have winning this match? My girl Marisol. Again, not only is she a force to be reckoned with, but my name is in her name. So I'm going wow. with my name. <laughs> Look at that. This was layup on layup for Soul and Picks this week. And I'll be honest, for the second time, I guess I'm a big fan of Soul's name too. I'm also going with Marisol. Uh, I think Marisol has just, again, she's one of those players where it's like from the second she stepped into the game. I was like, ooh, this is somebody to watch out for. And Kevin Smith has not been going up against slouches by any stretch of the means, but I feel like Marisol's road to get here has been one particularly soaked in the blood of greats. Like, she really, I feel like, had to fight tooth and nail to get to this spot to earn her reputation. And for me, it's got to go to Marisol. With, again, thinking about the work that Corruption put in last year and how much of that we can attribute to Marisol specifically – and how much work she's again put in this year. I'm going Marisol. Uh, Mike, what about you? I think for a while, people have had this tendency to think of Kevin Smith and the Schmodown as almost like a gimmick. Like, it's always like, it, it, always, it, it tends to seem like it's the Schmodown featuring Kevin Smith, not Kevin Smith, you know, competitor in the Schmodown. And I, I think he's, he's got, it's, it's Kevin Smith. He's got the fire in his, in his belly. And he is ready to just, you know, show him that it's not, it's not a, it's not a shtick, it's not a bit. Uh, you know, he knows his stuff, Kevin Smith, and he and he's riding hot. You know, stuff's coming out for for his Masters of the Universe thing now, and he is he is ready to uh, he's ready to lay it on thick. I'm going with Kevin Smith on this one. And we can't mm -hmm. forget the fact that several live events have been announced at the Scum and Villainy Cantina. Which is where he and Mark Bernard, uh, Mark Bernardin, uh, film Bernardin. their show. Bernardin, I was right the first time. Why did I question myself? God damn it! Go with your guts, just like in the showdown. Go with your first. I'm instinct. mad, so I got to cut some bogs now. Bogs, what do you have? So yeah, I, I am going with Marisol, but I I like Smith as a player. Like I think he can, you know, for you to K, I think did he TKO or KO um, Stacey Howard? But either way, to, to beat her, and she's there, so. He would have to have a or something along the lines. It is conceivable. Uh, I will go with Marisol. But I'm, honestly, I will not be surprised if he wins. I think he's absolutely legit. Um, how good? I don't know. But can he win this match? Yes. Um, will he? I don't think. So. Fair enough. And Con, how about you? John will take some edibles and then we'll hear a bunch of. Kevin Smith time, baby! Let's go! You want a revolution? I want a revelation! Well, not only am Let's I go. saying names completely wrong, but now Colin got us a copyright strike, so now I'm extra pissed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can say I have the power. I mean, Battelle's so big, they won't come for this. That's One can only hope. Uh, and that brings us to our final match to talk about. Wait, who'd you pick? Oh, I picked Marisol. Okay. Yeah. Just um, okay. That's fair. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> uh... Then we have Corruption versus Shazam. This is Mike Kalinowski, Chance Ellison, William Bibiani, and the kid Brendan Meyer. This one is tough, and I'll just do y'all a favor. I'm going to go ahead and give my pick first, especially because I'm dumb. I'm getting everybody's names wrong left and right, so you don't even really have to worry about what I have to say. But what I do have to say is I think Corruption is going to win this. I think Corruption is going to win this. Obviously, like we can't ignore the fact that Shazam just got two perfect games under their belt. But I feel like we've also seen Shazam sometimes have a little bit of trouble holding on to those victories individually and as a team. And I feel like if there's a team that's got their number, I feel like it might be Corruption. I feel like Mike and Chance, they just have this electric energy where if anybody makes the mistake of letting them get some momentum, they're going to ride that all the way to the top. And so for me, I, I got to go with Corruption on this one. I think they're going to get those teams' belts back. Mike, what about you? This, this one was tough. This this was a hard one to, to pick on. Um, I, I sat and thought about this one for probably a good half hour. And um, the, what it really came down to is just with how I've seen them, not so much how, how I've seen them when they've been on top, how I've seen them when maybe they're struggling a bit and how they've handled it. 
And I think Shazam have a tendency to, it, it, you know, they're that boulder. When it's coming down, it's not stopping, but it doesn't take much to throw them off a little bit. You know, you get you, they, they hit that one bump and it sends them in a different direction, whether it was missing questions and, you know, Brennan or, or even Bibbs will get in his own head. Um, but also stuff like, you know, with, with the virtual matches when they were having technology problems, like that would shatter their confidence to even continue to play. Uh, and so I, I think this one's going to end up going to corruption because I think when they're even having their down moments, they, I think they recover a little bit better than Shazam does. Um, so I think that when the when things start getting down for either one of them, you got a better chance of corruption coming back than Shazam. So I'm gonna take corruption on this one. There you go. Well reasoned, man. Uh, what about you, Bugs? Uh, honestly, don't know. Um, such a tough call. I mean, Shazam if or like this match is stumped Bugs. Like that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what a well put together card. <laughs> Uh, because you know they do, they have been going perfect last few matches. But yeah, I, I've seen them a few times get rattled a bit. But ha, I mean, a corruption do perform often in live matches, so it is tough. But I do kind of want Mike to be, you know, like a three-time team champ. That'd be cool. Three-time team champ and a three-time IG champ. That's, kind of crazy. that's some Rushmore level um, stuff, right? Like if yeah. he does that, like that's that's insanity to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I just, I don't know, something. Uh, I'm coin flip. I'm gonna go Shazam. I no real reason, just 50 just 50. Just a bet match, against yeah. me, just a bet yeah. against me. You're that's, betting against... that's where the money's at. Wait, 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 wait. We gotta look at uh stats here. I think this is the first time that Box has ever bet against chance. Uh, maybe, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like I say, it's a coin flip, but um, friendship ended. It's just that yeah. they're the titleists. That I think they're the slight favourites because of how they've been playing as well. So I'm just, I guess, the easy answer is Shazam. I don't know, but yeah, fifty fifty. Well, Colin, what so. about you? Do you know? Do you have a pick? Mm, no, I don't know either. It's so look hard. at how trying to pick this match has broken us. Like look at what this has done to us. Every hole that I feel corruption has, Shazam fills. And every hole that Shazam has, I feel like corruption fills. It's one of the most even matchups. It takes us back to like top 10 and Schmoes No. Like the uh, the original team's battles of like going back and forth. And just how even they are with... I, there's just something about when you lay out how similar Chance and the kids uh you know co- common knowledge is i feel like there's so much of overlap of like oh that's a good pull i feel like they could both pull them there's just something about the difference between bibs and mike that really really makes it hard right now to pick against shazam shazam just feels like such a complete team but i'm gonna do it anyways let's go corruption and chance he's gonna get that belt back come on boy let's go there you go how about that and soul it's up to you who do you have i'm gonna be short and sweet with this one how dare you take this moment away from soul i'm sorry (laughs) all right it's totally fine soul who do you have? I'm going to be short and sweet with this one. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Colin, you broke me. The, this match didn't break me. Colin broke me. Okay. But I think Mike wants to be double belted again. So I'm going with corruptions. There you have it. Those are our picks for the corruption collision that's what i'm calling it i'm calling it corruption collision because i got them winning both and i just get to say things somebody gave me a show who did that was it john roca the person who resides over patreon.com slash john roca the man the myth the legend who you can monetarily support right now and support us at the same time gosh what a great thing to do our thanks of course to mike as well for casting each one of us as well and here now to be a part of the show to be one of the few people that helps me feel a little bit better and sometimes it's just uh, by a number that's smaller than the number I have, which is also already too small. Uh, but I just wanted to let you all know, watching at home, because the collision 
is going to be happening on Saturday. We are going to be going live at a different time next weekend. We're going to be going live Sunday, 2 p.m. Pacific. I know normally we're on at 3 p.m. Pacific Saturday. We're doing it 23 hours later. Gang, set your calendars now. Start your clocks. You got to remember, I know it's hard. I know, Me, I know better than anyone. Numbers are dumb. But this time, you got to care about them just the once in order to make sure you can join us live next weekend. But for this episode, that's about it. All we have to do is go around the horn and say where the people can find us up until Sunday. Starting with you, Mike. Do you have anything you'd like to plug? Uh, yeah, you guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. Mike Shea. And uh, I'm uh, hosting a comedy show at my house on August 29th called Homegrown Humor. All the info for that is on my social media. And just, yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching, supporting the show as much as you do. We love and appreciate it. And uh, thanks to John for giving us all jobs. Truly. Uh, Boggs, bouncing it on over to you, where the people can find you. Yeah, catch us. Uh, like I said, just to confirm, Sunday, 2 p.m. PST. Obviously, collision on the Saturday. What's that in your time, Boggs? That is 10 p.m. my time. Got it. Uh, 10 p.m. Sunday. Uh, see things I do for you guys. Um, but <laughs> the uh, what I was going to say in the Patreon, you know, we've talked about a few Patreon matches. Uh, after the show, I'm super excited for it. You know, me and Saul are calling a, the singles title match between the director, Alan Smithy, and Canada Rocks. Uh, that would be cool. That's a five rounder. We've got to do so. Uh, yeah, that's uh, got to plug that. And yeah, just check us out on the Pop Culture Universe. Uh, you know, we're doing Bad Batch reviews and uh, we're going to do He Man review and trailer reactions, all that good stuff. So check us out over there. There you go. Fair enough. Colin, what do you have to plug? Mm, so much now. Since the last time I was on the show, I've been working on some stuff, folks. Ooh. You can find me right here on Saturdays. You can also find me in about 45 minutes over on What Real Entertainment, where me and my boy Toby breaking down Bad Batch over on Saber Reels. We're going to be discussing that sweet, sweet Grogu photo that we mentioned earlier. And ooh, we, I am so proud of of this show that I've been cooking up over on what real sports that is R E E L don't come for me HBO real sports with Colin Morris and the company we are breaking down everything in the world of sports we got the NBA draft coming up on Thursday it's going to be a huge show we're getting into the NFL right now as you can tell sports are a big part of my life and now again I finally have a place to let the world know why I know more than them there you go. Just about Check. sports. Anything else? Anything else? I, I know nothing, Jon Snow. Yeah, you and me are going to be co-hosting a number show on what, right? <laughs> just about numbers, where we're like, yeah, what is what does two even mean? We just keep calling Felix, and we're just like, please, please help us. Explain to me how one equals zero, Felix. If you're like, I got you. I could totally write that down. I got a well, formula one, in Excel. One person that never needs anything explained because they are the librarian, they are a genius, and we are always so blessed to have them, is Soul. Where can the people find you? I, I, I don't know about genius, but thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, Echoing Boggs, uh, Pop Culture Universe, you can see me gush over The Witcher. I'm so excited for this new anime movie that's coming out on Netflix. I'm excited for the trailer, the Witcher trailer that came out. So, like, just watch me. Just be super excited about The Witcher. Be super nerdy about The Witcher. So, yeah, uh, toss a coin to your Witcher. There you go. Uh, as for me, at John Barr Tweets, Twitter and Instagram, twitch.tv slash John Barr. Check out John Barr on YouTube. I might put up a Space Jam 2 review just because I had a lot of thoughts. On I mean, it. If you need I help, can... I'm your boy. For sure. Will, I just might. I just might. And uh, also, Mark Bernardin wrote a great comic book on Comixology called Adora. He's going to be working on the Critical Role animated show, which stars Matt Mercer. Uh, so check out both of those things as well. I'm very excited. Gang, that's going to be it. A lovely two hours and 17 minutes with all of you. But our time has come to a close for tonight. We will see you next weekend, Sunday, not Saturday, for another episode of the Ultimate Schmodown After Show. Good night. Sunday, Sunday, 2 PM. Sunday. 2 p.m. Yeah. PST. 2 p.m. PST, 5 p.m. Eastern, Book 10 o'clock, box time. Big guest coming. My dog really needs to go to the bathroom.